today's episode of Fight Game Podcast, it, this is number five. I am so excited about who we have on today because a lot of people out there are going to be like, you know, what, what's this guy all about? You're going to find out what he's all about. But for those of you who don't know, this is a guy that helped basically create a BJJ scene here in the uh, D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. He's helped bring it up to a level that, I mean, it, what, what would you say? I mean, it, it, it's a world-class level, and it's a level that fighters, yeah. pro fighters, can become monsters with this guy, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Absolutely, 100% believe that. He's got a ton of stories that in the pre-show he told us, but he said he won't tell you guys. <laughs> but he might. I don't know. It might come out. But you know what? That's okay. That just goes to show you the experience that this guy has, how long he's been in the game, um, how high he is in Brazilian jiu-jitsu under Helsing Gracie, the wars that this guy has gone through, the fact that this guy didn't just stick with, just stay with one art, but he actually branched out to become a more well-rounded fighter unlike some masters, quote unquote, we've got a killer on the show today. I'd like to introduce everybody to Tony Waldecker. Yeah. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. It's an honor. Absolutely. absolutely. Uh, the honor is all ours. This is cool. I love this setup, man. Yeah. yeah, we, yeah. We've got a chill little setup here. Yeah. It's nice and warm. It's getting hotter, so i gotta, I got to figure out a situation for the heat. <laughs> but guys, check it out. There's a couple of ways that you can support the podcast. I already mentioned that on Patreon. You can be on there. It's www.patreon forward slash fight game podcast. Go on there and become a patron for $2 or $3, $5. There's a $5 one where you get even more stuff. We're looking at creating uh, content that you, that's going to blow you guys' mind that's in the fight, that are lovers of the fight game. We've got a fighter's mind where we actually dive into what it takes to become a killer in your mind. It, Tony, you were saying earlier, that's yeah. that's the thing that separates pros from other pros is that's, that killer instinct. That's where the battle is. That's yeah. where the battle lies, right? Yep. I mean, you train your ass off in the gym, but once you get into that ring or into that battle... Yeah, if your mind lays an egg, it's it, over. It don't matter, does it? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to have a show like that. We're going to be going touring around to uh, different um, high... Like, again, world-class gyms in the DMV area to start with. And we're going to be doing a kind of all-access thing, fighter all-access thing, where you guys get to see in beautiful HD, probably 4K, actually, you get to see uh, fighting uh, training methods of the killers in this area, what they do in order to get ready for fights, so that when you get ready for your fight, you're not so, so, so much of a bum. And you're not doing stupid stuff, but you actually get to see what these other guys are doing so that you can make your game better. And then uh, we've got we got just a ton of stuff. There's that. Fighter Stories is the thing we want to do where we take guys like Tony, um, put him in front of a, uh, a, a backdrop, black backdrop, and just have him tell crazy stories of the game. <laughs> That's another thing that we're going to offer. But that only goes to patrons. So again, www.patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Dot com forward slash fight game podcast. Go there. That's where you're going to get all this good stuff. Finally, I'd like to thank Vicker Studios for giving us uh, all the cool equipment to use to broadcast this. And of course, epilogue shirts.com. I'm wearing one of them. My ninja. You can be, you know, some people say I'm, I'm white. I can't wear that. You can wear that. Man. It's about ninjas. <laughs> it's fine. It's universal. It ain't racist. Yeah. Yeah. So just wear it. And we got other cool shirts. So again, Epilogue Shirts. It's E-P-I-L-O-G-U-E shirts.com. Go there. You're also helping the podcast in that way. So finally, without further ado. Yeah. Coach Tony. Okay, so real quick before we start, we already have um, Patrick Gall, uh, who, by the way, congratulations on your recently obtained black belt. Yes. On oh, Patrick, yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah, he yeah. did a great job. Yeah, yeah and uh, Ron Hicks is also on, saying what's yeah. up to so, saying what's up to so, you. So. They're my brothers, man. Yeah, been around a long time in yeah, the game. Yeah, both of those guys too, been around a long absolutely. time. Yeah, absolutely. Still grinding. Yeah. So what I wanted to go into first and foremost is let's go over your background. Where did you get your start in martial arts from, and how have you progressed over the years? Well, when I was uh, when I was younger, I did a little. You know, karate. Yeah, I think everyone course. started off Everybody doing some of that. Everybody did that. You know, um, uh, I, 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 when I started uh, with what I'm doing now, I, um, <clears throat> it was probably back the, the first UFC when it came out. You know, that's yeah. when everyone kind of got the bug. Yeah. And uh, I, I went to, uh, uh, it, was a, it was a Gracie as Association okay. a long time ago. It was in Arlington. Okay. And, um, and then, uh, uh, I, I was right, not, 
I think it was off Glebe Road somewhere. I can't, it was been a long time ago. Okay. And then uh, um, there was a, a, a lady named Pam Denon and, and Rick Leonard were running the school. They're great people, okay. um, super talented, and they moved on, started their own uh, place called the Fighters Garage, which was okay. basically, for what I know, it was the, pretty much the first school in the Virginia area that, that wow. started jiu-jitsu. Um, okay. I, I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty positive it was the first, or, you know, one of the first, you know, right, right, right. schools in, in Virginia, and... um so from there, um, we trained. We had a, that was when all the Gracie. We had all the Gracies coming out. You know, had Horian, Helson, Holker. All those guys was coming out and training with us. Wow! And um, we also did a lot of Sambo tournaments back then. So I got I was doing a little Sambo back then as well. And um, I also when I was in the Marine Corps, I learned a little Sambo as well. Okay. And um, so th- then uh, uh, we we we, we broke. I broke away from from the fighters garage that ended up becoming a, a Kaiki school under Bill Grinnell. who's okay. a black belt. One of my good friends. Is that correct? What is Kaiki? Kai, uh, uh, Jiu Jitsu and, and top notch Jiu Jitsu too. Um, uh, 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 he's, uh, he's the man, you know? Okay. Um, and so, and Bill Grinnell is a good friend of mine an incredible black belt, uh, has been there for a while. I, I broke off and stayed with Helson Gracie and okay. I've been with him ever since. Okay. Um, you know, and since the, mid 90s the mid 90s yeah for sure and and when you first <clears throat> when you okay coming from traditional martial arts i know mm-hmm. it's I, during the 80s and 90s early 90s mm-hmm. you, you look at something like for me i look at bjj right mm-hmm. back then you know I, what's bjj oh brazilian jiu-jitsu i yeah. thought that was a japanese thing what's this crap you know yeah. thinking it's like some kind of second rate uh-huh. thing yeah. what was it like for you like what was the what was that moment? Can you explain the moment where you go, oh, hell, I got to try this? Um, yeah, I can. Um, when I went to that, when I went to the, not the fighter's garage, but, this, but the uh, school before that, um, uh, the, the, I saw a girl that was in there that was able to whip up, whoop up on these guys and um and literally pretty much do what she wanted and, yeah. and we're not talking about wimpy guys you know um and i was like wow this is this is incredible that girl is uh pam denon um and um she's still a great friend of mine she's to me she's my sister and um this uh uh she was probably one of the first purple belts in the area that got her purple belt under Helson gracie back in wow. the day and okay. um uh and uh but yeah she this woman uh was incredible and um we just seen it so many times. We had people coming off the street that would see how we could do, and it was amazing. We would just smash them. So it was exa- It was is so. And if you if you do any research on uh, the beginning of of Gracie Jiu Jitsu here in the states, they've just put out calls. I know out over out in California, yeah. Um, they put out like at at Gracie new, challenges. Gracie challenges. So you guys yeah. were doing Gracie challenges too. Well, I mean, it wasn't like they did like the Gracies did, but people would come in. And and check us out and see how we would do and 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 whether or not we you know we were legit yeah. Was there but, any martial arts that gave you guys trouble like other martial arts? I think that um, that's a good question, and I would probably have to say uh, r- just plain wrestling is is probably the 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 biggest obstacle for jujitsu guys. I mean, I think wrestlers commonly make a lot of mistakes when it comes to jujitsu guys but i also think jujitsu guys make big mistakes with wrestlers as well like the so, like 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 defending from shots and things like that um you know wrestlers can yeah, but at least back in the day they were more susceptible to getting caught in guillotines and things like that mm. and um you know they they weren't used to you know b- you know if, so what if you pin a jujitsu guy and he's on his back he doesn't care you know um that's good now, for him yeah it's good for him and unless there's being punched unless there's punches being thrown right. then you know I don't, I don't recommend being down there you know um but uh, a lot of a lot of the uh you know they, they didn't know where to go after that so you've seen wrestler wrestling has done really well in mma hmm. uh, uh, so as well as jujitsu you and know how, how many years were you at that at that academy um that's a uh, uh, you t- the uh, fight works. Not I'm fight sorry, works. the fighters garage. Yeah, fighters garage. Well, I don't. I mean, I, I that's a good question. I don't. I don't. I couldn't really answer that. Okay. Did it? It's did been it, a while. Did it yeah. seamlessly? We used to have a. Uh, I, I we had this thing I, I made. It was a. Uh, it was called the fighters garage. It was a um like a wooden plaque that I made, and it said fighters garage free tune ups. It was coming. It's a, it was loved, a great time, dude. Come yeah. on, the, okay. Now and now it's got to come back. Fighters Garage has to come back. Yes, just for, just uh, off of that tagline. That that the Fighters Garage was 
a great place to train. It, it wasn't a, a, a money making, you know, school to where we were trying to make a lot of money. It, I'm, I'm sure it made its money, but you got great training there. The 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 everyone was like friends. I mean, after training, we'd all go out to eat, and and it was just a constant. I miss it. I miss those days bad. Those days yeah. can't can't be now, huh? Yeah. Um, it's things have changed. You know, yeah. things have changed. I mean, some things, a lot of things for the better. There's no doubt. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's it's more of a business now, you know, and that's fine. You know, if you yeah. got make your money. Yeah. But uh, back then, it, it it was just it just seemed a little different. I I I have fun with it. I, I, I obviously I stuck with it and made it a career. Yeah. Um, but um. I missed I missed the fighter's garage for sure. You know. Would you say it was a little bit more pure back then? Oh, come in on. That sense? Well, that's a um I th- I think in some aspects yes. Okay. I think in other aspects um you know um it's it's just different. Absolutely. Know? Okay. Um, that's know, absolutely I, fair I, to I, say. Yeah, I, I, as far as pure, I don't know cuz that's taken away, that'd be taken away from a lot of the Sure. a lot of the people that go, "Wait, I'm pure. We're pure yeah. too, you know." Let me ask you so, Tony, do you have any um do you have any memorabilia, photos, things like that from Fighters Garage? Oh yeah, I got, I got photos from me as a white belt, you know, uh, with Horian Gracie. Is that stuff? Is that stuff out? Is that? No, is I haven't. It, no, I haven't put that. It's it's just. Uh, can that come out? Can that be I, a thing? I can. Yeah, we have. We, I'm I'm sure, and I could, you know, get a hold of the, uh, of the girl that started it. I'm sure she has a bunch she, she actually said she was going to send me a bunch of stuff too girl started what the uh the fighter's garage a girl started pa- fighter's yeah, was, garage. Yeah, pam denon yeah she started fighters she garage? started fighter's garage and she was a badass too mm-hmm. and um rick leonard was another one who uh uh who was just man one of the they're two of the smartest people i've ever met in my life mm-hmm. and um really good at jujitsu so i got to give them a lot of credit for uh getting me started in it but yeah she started it and and rick was part of it too and um you know we had a out of, out of all the ones that are, that were there at the fighters garage i think um uh me and bill grinnell are the only ones that that went to black belt um you know uh from that from that school from that school yeah okay. i gotta much. i gotta stop you chris valentine mm-hmm um, our resident asshole yeah, on the show yeah, chris is, would uh, like to would like to ask if did you have hair back then <laughs> it's such a yes. Yeah, tell him, tell him I had hair, but it's escaping my scalp these days. <laughs> just like, just like his breath will be escaping when you rear naked choke him next yeah. time you see him. Yeah. You, um, I knew Chris is going to start trouble. Of course, he did. He did it with. Uh, he did it. He did it with Rick, Rick. Humphreys. Yeah. I don't remember him doing it with Rick McCoy though. Was he asleep that day or something? He was might he, not have been on. He might he, not have been yeah, on. Yeah, no, he's been afraid. On. Rick's McCoy's a scary dude, man. Uh, I think. Uh, <laughs> I don't think Chris would mess with you're, me. <laughs> you're, you're a scary dude. I trained with you for a little bit back in the yes. fight works days. And I remember seeing Tony like training guys. And Tony is definitely from the old school of jujitsu training yeah. where um, you're going to feel it and you're going to know it works. Yes, absolutely. It, you know, there's no, you, you know, there's some schools like, all right, you, you do again, back to traditional martial arts. You go to traditional martial arts like, uh, Kung Fu or, 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 uh, you know, your mall karate's yep. and you got people that go, uh, man, in the back of their mind, is this actually going to work? Like they're going on faith. Yeah. Is this going to work? It's almost, it's almost religious in a way. Is this going to yeah. work? Yeah. And, and no, you do jujitsu, you go, Oh, this is going to work. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't wait to use it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now coach. Um, so after the fighters garage, how long after that did you get involved with fight works? Because that's where I met you, and you were already a, I believe you were a brown belt by the time I met you. Yeah, um, Fightworks, uh, after the Fighters Garage, um, th- I, I immediately started up Fightworks. Okay. And um, I got that name because I had a tree company it's called TW Tree Works. <laughs> and um, so I was like, yeah, Fightworks. You know, and, and, uh, I love the history behind yeah. some of this stuff. This so is um, we, Fightworks was, uh, an, uh, you know, we, we were at uh, the World's Gym uh, when we first started, and uh we were just renting space there. Okay. We'd lay our mats out and go. And, and yep. uh, we'd have a lot of people come in from it, you know, and that was with my buddy, Matt Powell, okay. um, that I started it with. And then um, uh, it was great, great training, you know, fun times. And um, uh, and then we, and then my friend, Dan Wallen, mm-hmm. who's a, a black belt under me and Helson Gracie now, who just got his third degree. Congratulations, Dan. Oh, um, congratulations, uh, not, not an easy feat. And, um, no. uh, and then from, from the world, from the, uh, uh, world's gym 
we moved over. Uh, we got our own space uh, off uh, Davis Drive. Yes. And Sterling. Okay. And then that's really when fight works. You know, really established themselves. I like, Pretty much. And I, then Scott Howard came along, yeah. and, and you know, we had a, good, a bunch of good... We had tough guys at Fightworks back in the Very day. tough guys. You know, yes, still I tough, man. Remember. I mean, look at yeah. look at Chris Valentine. Tough as nails. Yeah. You know, um, should have been a black belt years ago. Yeah. You, know, but, um, <laughs> you hear that, Chris? He said he should have been a black belt. Yeah. Well, he's, <laughs> he's, 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 he's correcting that. It'll, it'll be this year for sure. All right. Hey, Alyssa, what's going on? Alyssa Bergeron uh, down in Virginia Beach is watching. Awesome. What's up, Alyssa? Thanks for show watching. Um, I wanted to say that I remember the first time I went to Fightworks. It's when I got out of the military. I was looking for a legit school to go to. And, I, you know, I went, I went to, you know, a few, a few different gyms. I checked them out. And Fightworks was, like, in the way in the back of this, uh, what, do you, what do you call Industrial it? Park. Industrial Park. Industrial exactly. Park. And let me tell you something. When you go in the back of an industrial park... To, to go to this thing, you know, just one door, it's got one. You already feel less safe. <laughs> yeah, you feel like you're going into something that where killers are born. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I th and, you know, you got schools that are like their own building, which is fine. You got schools that are, you know, in a, in a uh, um, what is that called? A uh, strip. A, yeah, a strip a, mall. A, mall, a strip, strip mall. mall yeah. Nothing feels more legit. Then going into an, you know, you're next to an air conditioning company. You got trucks everywhere. <laughs> There's got... a mechanics out right? Yeah, an air conditioning company. Exactly. Yeah, that that feels so to me. I don't know. I and I'm into the. I'm into that. I want the. I want that style of going in there and feeling like okay, yeah. we're in a place where it's bare bones. There's not. There's no frills. There's no. Te you know all this kind of BS. You go in there and you're going in there to work. It felt like that was a place you go to yeah, work. Definitely was. Now. And, and, you know, going further into, like, the Fightworks history, when, by the time you started Fightworks, were you already a brown belt or were you a purple belt and then moved? A progressed? purple belt. Okay. Purple, yeah, there was purple belt. High level belt, purple. Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah, sure. you know, I met you in 2005. 2005, 2006 was when we basically okay. first met. And I, I would do a couple of open mats at, uh, at Fightworks. From yeah, there. I was almost a black belt by then. Yeah. yeah. So by that time, how long, I guess my question is, your entire journey to your black belt, how much time did that cover altogether? Because I want um, people to understand that there, there it's is... A, it's a minimum of 10 years mm -hmm. um, to get it under um, under Helsin. You're not right. going to get it sooner than 10 years. I don't know anyone that has. Um, yeah. I think for me, it was it was probably 12. Okay. You know, because um, uh, I got mine in 2000, 2008. Okay. I started in the you know what the mid nineties. I don't yeah add those numbers up. Um, yeah, but um it, yeah it, you're not gonna as guys you know guys will get it now much sooner. Mm -hmm. um, some some guys will get it in five six eight years and it's just not gonna happen mm -hmm. with Helson. I, he doesn't care what, if you win competitions or not. You know. Right. Um, so do you think do you think that we're in the age of McDojos for J Br Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gyms? Um, I, listen, there's a lot of great jiu-jitsu gyms out especially in this area this is a great area to come train jiu-jitsu yeah. um uh he's, talk, a, he's talking about the dc maryland virginia exactly area. um but and and i'm not speaking about any of the ones in this area but there are a lot of mcdojos out there there are a lot of people that are frauds there are a lot of people that um that uh self-promoting <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's i mean um i i know a few of them that's gotten busted and and Exposed. Yeah, exposed, yeah. yeah. And um, it's just, it, it's bad. You know, it happens. Um, what, what, what's a way that uh, a brand new, doesn't know anything about jiu-jitsu student can can decipher between whether they're in a McDojo or if they're in a real gym? Well, one of the things that I think that a, a new person can do is check the lineage. You know, um, I believe lineage matters. Um, I, I, I if, if the person doesn't have a lineage or... He can't, you know, uh, uh, say where, you know, where he came from or how, you know, then that's, it's, it's probably not as upfront as he should be. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, um, everyone in this area in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area has, has a lineage that they can trace themselves back to. Right. Um, so we're, 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 we don't have that issue here. I think maybe in certain parts of the country you, you do. I mean, there's been people that's been busted before, you know, but, uh, not this, not in this area. If they have, a, if they have a lineage, uh, uh, you know, how far is it removed from the main instructor? You know, are they, are they, you know, twenty black belts away from the the head guy? You know, um, 
you know, so let's say whoever it might be, whether it's a grace here, whether, you know, the, whoever their head of their associations are, you know, so, but if it's close, you know, if they have a good lineage and, um, you know, there's a, there's a history and there's a record of, um, of them teaching and, um, and, you know, being around for a while and, 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 you know, uh, I, now you can look at what reviews and stuff. Yeah. And I don't know if that's yeah. necessarily the, the best way to go about it. Yeah. Um, you know, you have to check out the school. You have to see if you like the vibe. You know, there are some schools that focus more on the self-defense aspect. There are some schools that focus more on the sport aspect. And there are what we do. Um, we do both. Um, we focus on the self-defense a lot. Um, Sorry, which we, we being who? Ha- my lineage, House and Gracie. Um, we focus on the self-defense a lot. And it's not easy. I mean, the testing is not easy. And it's constantly uh, morphing and changing, and and and, um, and most people fail the test when they when they when they get you know if if, if they're not prepared for it uh, to you know I have to test for each degree I get and and um, but uh, there are a lot of schools that don't deal with punches, you know um, what kind of jujitsu doesn't teach you how to not take how to defend yourself against punches? Now if if that's just a, if your school is a sports school that's great have at it but. It's not a complete jujitsu school. Do you, if, do you, it, if it teaches you punches, how to deal with punches and kicks, and how to deal with attacks on the street, along with the sports stuff, I love the sports stuff. Helson had some of the first sport tournaments in the country. He did. He right. did. He brought the first sports jujitsu tournaments in this country, and um, but a lot of them, uh, uh, you know, the, the Gracie Arnolds, the Gracie Nationals. All that stuff, you know, he did. That's you know? it. That's and it. Hawaii, he put all that stuff. In. But the, also the thing is, a lot of these guys out there now, they know jujitsu, so they can invert. They can go, they, you know, they can do a, a beer and bowlers or something, which is all good and all fun to have out all that stuff. But they can't stop a punch, and, some, and, you know, they can't stop their face from getting hit. Mm-hmm. And we have black belts that come into Kaizen sometimes, or higher level, great sport guys that can win their gold medals and stuff. And then as soon as you start throwing punches... All of a sudden, they're not a black belt anymore. You know, um, <laughs> so that, and, and, um, that, that's, that's a, what I don't like. That's a perfect question. Um, that that gives me a perfect question. But in this then. area, real quick, this area is not so much. I mean, we got guys like you know, like Rick. You know, the, his guys know how to deal with punches. Rick we got, McCoy, absolutely. We you know we the schools around this area. You know, I think have an old school vibe, but at the same time can do very well in sport tournaments. And, and 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 bring home golds but they also are they also know the whole art as opposed to just you know pl- just rolling around you yeah. know you got to know that if you can't defend yourself in a fight then i think it's a joke and, do you do you think that do you think that it's ap- uh let me i want to ask this the exact right way do you think that a master somebody who teaches jujitsu to other people mm-hmm. should be a competitor uh, should be somebody who uh, competes in tournaments and things. I think they should have some experience with that for sure. Um, does listen, there are great sport competitor guys out there that are horrible coaches. You know, they, they just don't know how to convey information across, um, you know, but they're great themselves. Maybe one of the reasons why they're great is that they had extreme athletic ability, you know, and they, but they, but, or were they really masters. And, and but so, and there are some out there that maybe weren't the best competitors that were that are great coaches, great at conveying information, great at um, uh, motivating people, great at you know, at, at, you know there are, there are a lot of football coaches that are like that. You yeah. know, um, so I, I think it's a plus. I think it gives them credibility, and I think that um, it, 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 if you've never competed at all, then how do you, I, I think that how do you have that? Um, Mindset. I mean, well, look at I, I, look. Did, did did Wink Jackson? Did, uh, did, I don't know. Was he? Did he ever fight MMA? Did uh, that camp J- Jackson's camp? Oh, Greg Jackson. Yeah, yeah. I did. I maybe I know you knew some. He, yeah. But he's also one of the best guys out there to to go and to, to, to coach to coach. So does it? I think it helps. I don't think it's a a must. You know, but I don't know what he's. I don't know his background. Right. So it's possible. I that think he, he has fought be, MMA. Before. Yeah. So yeah. it might it might be a good idea then. To not be a do-it-yourselfer and have people in your in your corner that are go- that do bring that as well. Like if if you were to just go out and you let's say you're one or the other of the type that you just uh, mm-hmm. mentioned, well, what if you bring a guy? If you haven't competed much, but you're a great teacher, mm-hmm. what if you should you bring a guy in 
or a, a, a girl in who has competed and has that sort of that. Absolutely. You, you got to tie your loose ends. Right. And, um, and that's the thing. So just like an MMA school, um, I, I could, I could, I can teach ground fighting MMA. Great. But I don't, and I have very limited knowledge on, on Stan. I would need you yeah. to come into my team to, to, um, to make that, a whole, yeah. a whole camp. Right. Now, so to, to and to go back to again, going back to Coach Tony's history, you actually branched out at one point. And this is only because I knew you personally. Mm -hmm. I, I I remember there was a time when you branched out and actually trained in Thailand to do Muay Thai in Thailand with yeah. a John Scott <laughs> and a John uh, Sean Douglas. Yeah, Sean Douglas. Um, uh, so you know, um, he's my brother. Um, I've spent. A lot of time with him, mm -hmm. and uh, and all the same thing. Sean has branched out and and, uh, and trains jujitsu. Oh, so yeah, I gave okay. Sean his blue belt um, the last time I was out in Thailand and coached some more. I, I, I don't think I realized yeah. that a giant. Yeah, Sean like was doing lots of training with me out there doing okay. jujitsu. So he would come in and take privates with me. At the same time, I was in his camp and he was uh, working me and 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 making me skinny. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So yeah, it's a great. I mean, if he he. he Le, the guy's legit, man. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, no doubt goes, about that. And uh, it's one of the it was one of the best experiences I, I, I've had going out there uh, training with him. Okay. You know, um, if you ever have a chance to go train with train out there, I would I, I would say do it. Why not? You know, um, s something to tell your kids about. How hard is it to uh, get hooked up to go out there and do that? Um, I don't think it's that hard. You just got to contact him. You know, um, he, like for I know he doesn't accept. A ton of people you know he, he keeps his numbers relatively small um uh and so he can really work them you know and and if you go out there you're, you're gonna fight you know <laughs> it, it, you know if you want to fight he'll get you fights yeah so you'll you're out, you're out there you train you'll fight how did, how the hell do they find tie fighters your size <laughs> There is no tie fighters. In this <laughs> I was about yeah, to say, um, yeah, who did no, you fight? Yeah, there's he no fought, tie fighters. He fought uh, two tie fighters, one sitting on the shoulders of another. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's no tie fighters my size. Um, so uh, you know, I don't have any experience tie fighter. I just went out there, the, the, and the guy that I fought, I don't know how many fights he had. I know he had more than I did. He was smaller than me for sure, you know, and and uh, and he was he. I think he was beating me up. <laughs> you know, he was he was putting the. He was, you know, putting his licks in, you know, and I was like, I, I kept hitting him in the face and, um, <laughs> and, and, you know, listen, I, I, it wasn't pretty. I admit that it wasn't nothing, but they teased me after the fight, they were, <laughs> you know, the, the old Thai guy that was, you know, that was training. He was like, they, they were smiling. I ended up knocking him out, but, um, but, you know, I was like, if I had to throw one more punch, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to die here, you know, <laughs> you cardio. So, uh, yeah. Oh, and, and I was in probably the best shape of my life, but, uh, I just punched myself out, you know, I just. You know, yeah. I, I, I even told, wrote a note to myself the night, the night before to breathe, you know, <laughs> don't and forget to, and don't, and don't to do that. And, and I remember Sean, he, Sean was cussing me cause I wasn't listening to him. <laughs> and, um, you know, he was, he was just like you, I mean, I, I can't even say the things he said, but he, I was cussing me and I wouldn't listen to him. I, I just got lucky when I finally knocked a guy out. I was like, man, I hope that little dude stays down <laughs> because, uh, cause if he comes back up, I'm not going to take any more Damn, of this. Spider <laughs> monkey, stay down. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about. Uh, he was chewing something too. Oh, the, the, that's he, me. I'm sorry. No, no, no. He, he was chewing something. Oh, was he? Okay. That, that um, that uh, some leaf or something that that uh, I like think a it was like a leaf or it, something. It, it numbing his it face numbs up. Numbs his face up. Yeah. 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 And, oh. um, they do that. They do that. They chew on the um on that. It's like kind of coke. I don't know if it's cocaine, but it's like I think it's a coca leaf like, or something. Yeah. yeah. And they chew on yeah. that, and then, and that gets them nice There's, and nice and loose. One thing about the the fighters out there, they don't have any. They don't deal with nerves. I don't think they don't deal. They just they're out. They're, they you know a lot of them fought. Maybe they were like real high level fighters at one time, and then by the, by the time they get to Bangalore Stadium or something, you know maybe they're on the downside of their fight careers, and maybe they got jobs. They they, they just fight. It's like it's like nothing. It's like uh, it's like just waking up in the morning. You know, you got the foreigners going over there preparing and getting crazy and trying to get their mindset. These guys don't care. <laughs> These guys just go fight. Oh, who cares? Whatever. And you think that's you know? because they... Uh, They're just used to it. They start fighting at two. They've got uh, 300, 400 uh, fight records. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them have 300 fights. It's insane. Yeah. You know, but there's no... I don't think they deal with the same pressure. They don't have that pressure that, that the fighters here put themselves yeah. under. You they know, just don't care. One thing that Scott Howard said when he was on the show last is that he... When he's out in Thailand, he loves 
that he doesn't feel even if he lost a fight, like, you know, cause you fight all the time. And as a, as an instructor of a, of a school here in America, if you lose a fight, that, that looks bad on you and your school. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. Says, he says out there, you lose a fight, whatever. It's another day. Who yeah, cares? That's exactly what I'm trying to, I was trying to say, they don't care. And what Scott was saying is hundred percent correct. You, all, all you have to do is just go out there and do it. Yeah. You, there's none of that, none of that angst, none of that, you know, stuff it, it, it matters you know you're living the fighter lifestyle you're walking around in flip-flops all the time and, and, and unless you're running um uh it, you know the weather's great um unless it's raining all the time but you train twice a day you're running you're eating you're eating great if you and, had, um, if you had the choice to live for the rest of your life in one of two places which would it be thailand or brazil it depends on where in Brazil, um, but uh, your choice. Uh, man, I don't. That, that, it, I, it, it, I don't. It, I would probably. I don't know. Because I, I wouldn't want to live in Thailand full time, unless I've unless I've nothing here. With you know, I have family and stuff. But um, here. But if 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 I just had nothing, no nothing, ties, no ties. Would I live in Thailand? I don't know, man. Um, so it's so it's Brazil for you then. You know, I don't know. Probably not even that. I, I hate to say it. I, I um, I'd, I'd rather be somewhere south, you know, like in the states, like South Carolina or Florida, or, or is where I'd want to be. I want to be warm. I hate this cold ass <laughs> weather, and um, I, I want to be warm. At, but and I, you know, I want to. But I love I love Thailand. You know, that was great. You know, um, so. People are afraid of Thailand. A lot of people are afraid of going to Thailand. It's a long flight, number one, and it can be dangerous if 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 you hang around the wrong people and stuff. I can only you know, but if you go out there and train at one of the camps like Sean's camp, you know, he's got one at uh, the Bangkok fight camp coming up. You're going to be fine, and um, you're going to learn some great uh, uh, technique as well as you know seeing the culture, and and you'll have a great time. What's the camaraderie like there? Everyone there is is was extremely friendly yeah. um that thai people are very welcoming um uh land of smiles yeah yeah they they they, they are no I, I mean if you they're just like anything you go to the bad parts of town um you can get in some trouble and and you have to be respectful out there you can't go out there showing your ass all the time you I mean, you being a farang did that cause any trouble or are they pretty okay no, with farang no i was uh um i i went out there and you know i had something to offer you know um i was you know, they they were basically saying that I was. Uh, what do you, how do you say it? Uh, the our our John a John a John and uh, muy plum, which is what wrestling, yeah, right? Yeah. So that so I was basically, uh, you know, the ju- the jujitsu equivalent of an Arjan. Yeah. Um, that's uh, cool. So that's cool and, that and, they and they, it that way. They, that's how Sean put it out there, and it was it was fun, you know. So I, I got a lot of respect, and I gave a lot of respect too, you know. Um, uh, I remember the one guy that, that at the the first time I went out there when Helson went out there to corner me, and um and but the fight never happened, um because I, I guess there was some sort of uh, I don't know politics lo- or politics or something. But the, but he he went out there to corner me, flew out from from Hawaii to corner me, and but then it was just a wild crazy time after that since the fight nice. didn't happen. So we had a lot of fun, <laughs> but um uh you know they uh since the fight didn't happen, you know we went out and um and and partied, but. During that fight, um, uh, during the time of training, it was uh, it was intense. It was pretty intense, you know. Um, Sean, Sean, you know, you know, I wasn't a young, you know, spry. I was, I, you know, I was pretty old too, you know. So I thought I, you were only in your thirties at that point. Uh, the first time I was in my mid thirties, late thirties. Okay. And the the uh, second time late thirties and the third time is in my forties Okay, for sure. You know, still, and, young. Uh, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm real close to your age. I'm not going to say that you're old. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm getting, well, old. And, okay. you know, and when you're, when you hit your mid thirties, that's when things start to break down anyway. <laughs> I mean, even if you're yeah, not, you, start, it, yeah, you can't beat father time. Man. Nah. So, so, so speaking of health and how's health doing, he's doing well. Um, he's always somewhere teaching, Do traveling you, on a plane. The this, guy's, constantly traveling and uh going from school to school um with his associations and and then um then he'll take a break and go and go enjoy himself in uh brazil for a while and then it's back on the uh seminar circuit too i was wondering does he have an actual home base 
school and, and, in, in Hawaii. Hawaii yes. Okay. In Hawaii. Yeah. He okay. he brought jujitsu to Hawaii, didn't he? Yeah, he brought it to Hawaii. There's actually, I, 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 what is it? I can't remember the date, but there's a Hawaii has a national uh, has a Hawaii day for him. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, pretty <laughs> that's cool. awesome. Yeah. You know, and, he, and he's he's not a Howley. I don't know if if yeah. if he get. I mean, he's a foreigner. Yeah. But he's been there so long. I mean, yeah. he's been there for thirty something years. Yeah, he's he's probably he, they call him a local at this. point. He's a local at yeah. this. point. Yeah, wow. and no one's gonna listen. Helson, he might be he might be um, you know in his mid sixties right now, but no one's gonna say anything to that guy. You know, um, I Helson's a scary person. Really, uh, if you haven't met him, oh yeah, I met him. He's yeah. like one of the nicest guys in the world. You yeah. know, but he's definitely not one of the guys that you would want to. Cross. No way would I what I want to do. That he he would find a way to hurt me bad. Yeah, he was and, he was a second eldest out of the brothers. Yeah, yes. Yes. Okay. And I I stuck I stuck with him because I felt that his jujitsu was the, the, the nastiest. And um it was the it was it was great for fighting, it was great for sport, it, it just covered it all, you know. It, um and it's it's a surprisingly simple. Hmm. Now, that's a great segue into something that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, and this is a question that I asked you before we went on the air, and it's talking about training and, uh, you know, the importance of mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll start with that, you know, with, with, with what you've learned and what you've accumulated over the years. What's mindset? Pl how big of a part does mindset play into training the fighters that are coming up today? I, I think that that is the most important thing. Okay. You know, um, for two reasons. If you have the right mindset, um, okay, put it this way. You can be the f most fit guy in the world and you can go in and, and completely gas because your mind's not right. Right. Okay. You know, you have that fight or Absolutely. flight stuff going on yeah. and your, your mind is not right. So you completely gas and lay an egg in front of everyone. Right. right. So having your mindset it, it, right, know, having your technique down, knowing your plans, and also knowing that the plan can go astray and that you have backup plans. So, and and um, I, one of the things I tell my fighters and, and um, uh, my students, whether they're fighting or um, just competing in, in, in sport tournaments, mm -hmm. listen to your corner. I mean, it is such a house, just do it. <laughs> There's no excuse not to do it. You know, we get, when we're down, cornering, we're like, hey, can you hear us? Can you hear us? They're like, you know, all in yeah. all in Never Never Land. Yeah. You know, um, eyes, eyebrows way up here because they're yeah. all. You know, um, or they're trying to mean mug, which is a, to me as a, a sign of, of of fear that's going on. Ah, okay. And um, but if and if they listen to, it's like cheating. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> literally like cheating. Listen to what we say. Yeah, you know, we're going to help you win this fight. If you, you just know? listen to your corners, you absolutely. Really will. We're not there to make you lose. But that's a that's a that's again that's a mindset problem, right? It's, exactly, yeah. and people people don't do that or or they'll say they're going to do it like i had a fighter recently you know um uh he was uh basically winning and then he started you know slowing down i'm like i asked him between rounds i'm like are you okay how's your arms feel and him not telling me that um uh he was he he basically said i'm okay coach my arms feel good i'm good and but no they weren't they were noodles at that time they mm -hmm. had they were useless basically but and he didn't want to say that no, they're tired, you know. But if he would have told me, maybe I could have came up with a different game plan for him yeah. at the time. You know, I remember when Charles Crenshaw um, back in. You remember Charles Crenshaw? Um, yeah, he, he was a beast back in yeah. the day. Charles would have made it to the UFC. He ended up coming down with cancer, for, uh, and he's okay now. But okay, good. he fought Amir Sadala. You know, uh, uh, b back when Amir's yeah. competing lo locally. That's the guy that um, uh, John Scott was telling me. He's the one that, uh, in, in one of the fights that he was in, he broke his knuckle he and broke, pushed it, like two or three of his knuckles and pushed him all the way back down to his he wrist. He broke his hand horribly. Yeah, and know? didn't want to say anything to Yeah, didn't want to say we were, we, Yeah, we were like, I'm like, you know, hit him with your left, hit him with your left, and, and use your left. And he just wouldn't say, hey, yeah. coach, my hand. It's broken, yeah. It's, it's, it's destroyed. It's shattered. It was, a it was a bad break. It wasn't, yeah. a, you know, so... Being honest with yourself and what's going on in a fight, uh, trusting your coach and not worrying about his opinion. Let's say if the guy told me, Coach, my arms are dead. I don't, you know, what am I going to say? Oh, suck it up. No, no. I'm going to be like, okay. Some would. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's, I mean, that would be, I, that, I'm not doing him any favors by saying that, right? Yeah. Um, I'd be like, 
listen, okay, your arms are shot. We got to, we got to change this a little bit. We got to, you know, we need to maybe start going to some kicks, you know, start low cut kicking. Some, cut some angles. And like yeah. Maybe avoid yeah. clinching. But if, if we don't know if he's, you know, and we're just, you know, the communication between the fighters is everything. And I'm um, not listening to your fighters. There's a sure way to get beat. And for me, if it keeps going on, I'm not going to coach you anymore. If you stop listening to us, I'm not going to coach you anymore because I, I don't, I, I look at it as disrespect. I look at it as you're not trying to win. Are you just, we're here to make you win between me, Nima and everyone else. We have, we have a good game plan for you. You know, um, listen to what we say. You're, it, it's just the best opportunity for you to win this fight. We've watched the films. You know, we've seen what's going on. And some of them just so, don't. But so a, a, with Kaizen, we, our guys are really like Samir. Yeah. Remember I was talking about Samir? That guy, he's the most mentally set fighter I've ever seen. The guy is, if, if all my fighters, if I could download his mindset into the rest of the fighters, <laughs> I would do that. Sorry, Coach, opinion. let me just interrupt you right there. For those of you that don't, that aren't familiar, Samir Farid is one of the the best fighters in, this, in, in, in the East Coast. Amazing, oh, amazing, phenomenal striker, phenomenal wrestler and grappler. Really a truly all-around package. I've been a fan. I, I was telling Coach Tony about this. I've been a fan of his since his amateur career. Great fighter, great attitude, just an overall good guy. Really, really fun to watch. If you if you have never seen uh, if you've never seen or heard of Samir Farid, look him up on YouTube. I'm sure you can find some highlight reels on. And him. we're probably gonna have him on the show. And we'll probably have him on. You gotta the have show. him on the show. And just so you know, um, Chris Valentine said hilarious sparring between Charles and Lenny. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you remember any yeah, of those sessions, but I, I are you talking about Lenny? Uh, yes, Smith. Smith. Lenny yeah. Smith. Yeah. No, that I, guy. I, that guy effed my my head up. Like he actually hit <laughs> my first week in uh, at Fightworks. He we were only going like twenty percent, but the guy's a bodybuilder, so yeah. his twenty is like one hundred and twenty. Yeah. He hit me in the side of the head with like a hook. And my, I had water, like a water feeling in my ears. For yeah. Fall, like four weeks after that. Yeah. Lenny, you, probably, you probably ruptured an eardrum. Yeah. Len, so you know. You mean you mean Len ruptured my eardrum? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Now Len Len is 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 my best friend, and um, I talk to him almost daily. He lives in Florida, and um, the guy's been a four stripe brown belt forever because he because he hasn't been able to get up. And uh, and and prepare for his test in front of Helson. Right. But the guy's been a for and he and, and he's good. And I've cornered him, and where he's just destroyed people. And um, Lenny, uh, yes, is he strong? Yes, he's he's. Uh, uh, if you were to say Lenny, are you a bodybuilder? He he would be like, no, uh, I'm more of a. Uh, he's a weightlifter, powerlifter, killer. Um, yeah. And um, you know, but the guy is uh, no disrespect, Len. No, I wasn't no, disrespecting. No, no, of you. course not. No, <laughs> but um, Len, he, you know, I. You know, Lynn, uh, you know, I, he, he, Lynn is, is my brother. I talk to him all the time and, um, he, if, if there's no one more old school than Lynn when it comes to, you know, this stuff. And, and I, I, I wish that I could spend more time with him training. I will, but go down and work with him soon. But, uh, um, you said you wanted to be in Florida anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let uh, me, let me ask you this, Tony. Um, you were, you were mentioning, uh, you know, not listening to your corner. Yeah. Huge problem. Two things that I want to say, and then one question. For the two things I want to say is, psychologically, uh, I I can, I th I think psychologically, there's two problems. One is ego, and the other one is you vulnerability or the ability to be vulnerable to other killers. Mm -hmm. uh, when you are trying to portray or be a killer, and especially when you don't have a lot of, um experience being one or maybe mm -hmm. confidence in yourself being one to show weakness. You always feel like that is the thing you don't want to do is show okay. weakness. Mm -hmm. But my question to you is this, have you ever had a fighter who had that problem where they didn't listen to you and you were able to help them turn that around and, and then they did listen to you? Yes. And, and how did that happen? How did you help that happen? Um, uh, yes, I have, um, had that. And, uh, a lot of times, um, it's their own self doubt. So you got to be able to motivate someone, yeah. and um, and to be able to say, listen, you know, um, all this work you're doing, all this, everything that you went through between this, you know, you're going to throw it away right now. You're throwing it away right now because you're not paying attention to what we're saying to you. You know, um, yes, everyone that gets in there is pretty tough. Yeah. You got to be, you got to be tough to to just get in there. Yeah, you know, absolutely. so you got to give them someone respect to get in there and do that. But you know, I would rather take uh, someone that's a little less tough and a little more smart. Mm. You know, because um, I think that you can. You, you, now, I don't. Someone, I will say, hey, listen, you can't train heart. 
you know, maybe to a s- small extent, you might be able to train hard. So you got to have what it takes to get in there and lay it on the line and not quit. You got to have no quit in you. But, I, you know, nothing's more dangerous than a smart fighter, a smart, tough fighter. Nothing is more dangerous. Those are the ones that make it. Stupid fighters don't make it very long. I really think that stupid fighters don't, don't go very far or they end up, you know, overtraining. They end up missing weight all the time. They end up uh, it just, you know, smart fighters is where it's at. You know, and uh, I would I would take a smarter fighter over a, a, a just a a, a a meathead any day. There you go. So all you guys out there listening, that maybe you're a meathead, maybe you don't know. It's hard to uh, be able to see yourself. But vo- first of all, I think vulnerability. If you find a team that you're part of, that that's legit, and obviously they are in it to help you. You get there's a sense, there's a there's a lot of vulnerability. Like when you went out to Thailand, mm-hmm. you were vulnerable. Yeah, I don't know. What, I didn't know what I was doing out there. Yeah, <laughs> but but you you trust you know Sean, and you you know that that's what's going to help you. But you trust the training and you trust the methods and you trust the concept and you try to learn try to learn it. Would you agree it. with agree with me? You have to have the physical abilities. Yes, you have to have the heart for sure. Absolutely. And I'm generally, I mean, uh, people that don't have the heart probably don't end up d- choosing that line of work anyway. Very true. Very but, true. But, um, you know, and some have more than others. Yes. And some have no chins, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but, but wouldn't it, wouldn't you rather just have a cerebral fighter that, Absolutely. that is a student that looks at you and go, man, that is, that information is incredible and takes what you taught them over the last, you know, three or four months and uses it. Yes. You know, that, that gets me excited. Yeah. I'm like, he just did what I told him to do. It's awesome. Yeah. Isn't that you know? what, isn't that what makes a, a, a 10, 11, 12 year black belt? Somebody who makes black belt that soon is diligent, has that has that mindset, but they're smart. They obviously you got to be smart to be a black belt in jujitsu, right? I think you got to be. Well, um, yeah, I think you, you can't be stupid. You know, you know. You, you, I get it. Depend. You can be, be a physical phenom, you know, but being a black belt and knowing all the aspects of jujitsu from the fight side, the sports side, the valetudo side, um, the the self defense side, um, all that stuff takes dedication and yeah. time. And um, so in patience too. And just to, there are no shortcuts. Yeah, and just to cl- kind of clarify, people talk about you know a smart fighter, and it's it's intelligence in that arena because there are some people. She, you, yes, they are naturally gifted at it, but unless you truly understand all the different aspects of that fight, like Coach Tony was talking about, you know, from the sport, the self defense to the Valley Tudo side of it, until you can understand uh, un- understand all of those facets of it. You're, you're still dumb to you know to put it simply. You're still a dumb fighter until yeah. you actually start to really like like learn how to apply those concepts and those. What is those a dumb techniques. fighter, uh, Paul? A dumb fighter is the person that just goes in there thinking that they can do it. That, that they they can just fight because they want to fight. And they're just pushing meat around. They're yeah. not. They're not being uh, yeah. strategic. It's incomplete. It's incomplete. So, oh, so sloppy. Yeah. And um, it's ugly. Very very. And so, yeah, having having a, a cerebral fighter um, that that does have the physical attributes and, and the mental toughness is you, then you have something you can you can you know you can grow and look forward to something with this guy. Yeah, you know, and unfair they they don't come around that often. You know, they um, don't. And you know, and, and it, you can make guys smart. A lot of it is absolutely. immaturity, right? Yes. A lot of it is definitely immaturity. Um, a lot. What I see a lot of people doing now, um, especially. Let's say, for example, if you're a great stand-up guy, yes. you know how many times that you've hit done pad work? Yeah. You're repetition, repetition, repetition. Yeah. But your ground game is just garbage. Rotten. Yeah. You and and you don't want to train the repetitions and the time it takes like you did on the stand-up to get good at the ground, yeah. and vice versa. You that know, it goes vice kills versa. Kills me with fighters. Yeah. Because I'm like, you're an you're a great jujitsu guy, but remember the fight starts standing. Start so, standing. Yeah. You learn know, the stand-up I, stuff. I you know there, there's probably going to be some you know, real uh, awesome fighters out there that are watching this that are going to, you know, flame me for this, for saying this. But I'm just, look, one thing is, Paul is the fight coach on this show. Yeah, sure. I am the guy who who fought. and You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I trained. But I'm I'm really bringing kind of a more layman perspective to this whole thing. Right. And, that, and that's the respect I give you guys. So when I ask this question, you know, don't, don't, don't get mad at me, but... Um, when I when I did when I did um, when I studied Muay Thai, mm-hmm. you know, um, I, I you go into fight works and it, it's not mutually exclusive. Like 
when you go into uh, Fightworks, for instance, or a gym like that, you you're doing one thing, but you are always being pushed to do the other thing too. Like if they offer wrestling, if they offer jujitsu, mm -hmm. you're like, dude, you need to do this too. Like, what are you doing? Right. Like come, come this day too. And right. so I, I'd started doing a uh, uh, jujitsu mm -hmm. and I was like, this is hard. Like jujitsu <laughs> is legit to me. It's difficult. Was more hard than Muay Thai was. Sure. Like even in a, from a cardio aspect. Absolutely. It's a, it's like, yeah, a, some people think it's the exact opposite. When I did stand up, I would gas. You know, yeah. but on the ground, I'm not gas. And, 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 and that's so what I was going to say is that for some people, it just depends on where your affinity lies. Yeah. Now, if you go into, if you tell us, now, when you go walk into a school like, whether it's Kaizen, Fightworks, Disciple MMA, when you walk into those places, there are some people that say, I really just, I'm really just interested in Muay Thai. Fine. Right. Take the, take all the Muay Thai classes. But there are people that are say, that will come in and say, oh, I only want to do jujitsu. That's cool. Do the jujitsu classes, or there are, we have. But, our, if, but if you're on, but if you're on the, if you make it to get on the fight team, if you want to be, if you want to fight MMA, you are training all aspects of it. You have to train yeah. all aspects. And, and like of Tony it. was saying during pre-show, you really fighters should have one that they dedicate themselves to Absolutely. more. Absolutely. Absolutely, but, I don't disagree with but, that. Or, or, or the, not necessarily dedicate more at that time, yeah. but but let's say for example, if uh, you got a great ground game, and um, and that that's pretty much that's your base that you always fall back on when when things get yeah. hairy. But at that time, you know how much better are you going to get at a ground game? How much better are you going to get as a stand up? Yeah, as your 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 functionality and stand, how much better? Yeah, I could get a lot better standing up. Yeah, you know, my I I could still get better in jujitsu, but you yeah, know, I, I, that climb is no longer yeah, like the big spike that it is. Exactly. It so, be. and nobody wants to put the repetitions in. It seem it seems like, and you got to put the repetitions in because it, it's not second nature at that point. Yeah, and I, I and that's where Leo was mentioning this. Where some for some people that's a point of pride. Like they don't, you know. I know a lot of you know, uh, MMA fighters that were that that are proficient stand up that were like. I'll, I'll skip jujitsu because I can knock them out. I'm like, no, yeah, that, that you're gonna because you're gonna run into somebody that can slip your punches and take you down. Exactly. That's a, you're you know, always that's... gonna run into somebody that can get past whatever your ba your great skill set is. There are people that are gonna be able to get around that. Let's say I'm let's say I'm new, Paul. I'm mm -hmm. a new guy. I, mm -hmm. I walk into Disciple, uh -huh. right? And I I go in there. I don't know if you get these guys. You probably do, but I want to I want to be an MMA fighter. Okay. Right. Do you say, okay, cool, let's start you off on everything. You're going to do jujitsu and you're going to do Muay Thai and you're going to box it. Or do you say, hey, why don't you start here, get good at this thing first, and then go to the next thing, the next art? Me personally, what I like to tell people is if they come to me and ask me what I, what I should do, if I want to fight MMA, I'll say, okay, to make it easy on you, come in on a Saturday when it's open mat. That way you can you can... You can try what the striking aspects of it are, and you can d and also switch up and go roll with the with the guys that are rolling. You'll, see, you'll see what you'll see what the deal is really fast. Yeah, you know. That, um, but what I will tell them if okay, so you figured out you still want to do do you still want to do this? Yes. Okay, so that means that you're coming here um, at least Monday and Wednesday for uh, for Muay Thai. And you're coming Tuesday and Thursday. So yes, that's four days we, a week of but training. We were just here. we were just talking about the fact that. Um, and I don't know if it's because now MMA is its own martial art; it's its sure. own thing. Yeah. But we were we were talking about the fact that there's you don't there, by the time you're a master of mm -hmm. of more of more than one art, mm -hmm. you're probably old too old to fight. And that's okay because I think that you know for I know that from you know from what I remember of what, when what Coach Tony has preached in the past is that you know you do. If you're fighting MMA, you just you, period end of story. You have to have a comprehension of both sides of the yeah. uh, of the game. Like we said, right? You got to be a general practitioner of everything. Yes. But you got to at least have a specialty. Yes. Uh, and what you do, let's say your specialty would be stand up. Your, your stand up. Mine would be on the ground. Yep. But I have to have a good functional general knowledge of, of what you yeah. do. You know, and um and and so that's the that's the thing. So, and and what a lot of people don't want to humble themselves to do that stuff. No. To learn both aspects of it, or or, or, or even three aspects of of yeah. the game. You, you're you're in an area, Tony. You 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 train all over, but mm -hmm. um, you, your home base is in Maryland, right? Yeah, I teach at, at Gracie Maryland, Mike Stewart School, and um and uh, there's basically jujitsu and self defense, um, and I teach uh, at Kaizen MMA and Falls Church, 
and also Fairfax. And oh, I, I, I mainly work with the fighters there, just the fighters. So one, so one problem that we have in this area, this is an area where people move. Most people move, if they move here or if they live here, they have insane work schedules. Yes. They go to school. I mean, it, it is a, what do you call it? It's a white collar town sure. area, right? For the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and you got people that, you know, they, they live blue collar lives. And a lot of the fighters are blue collar guys. I mean, yeah. because they have those sensibilities. And, and you know, they this is something that they, um, they're kind of raised doing is, sure. is, is fighting and being tough, right? Um, but knowing the fact that these guys have day jobs and places to be and families and stuff, what would you say? I, okay, I'm that guy, Tony. I, mm-hmm. I'm walking to your gym. I, you see, I've got talent. Mm-hmm. I want to be a. I want to be a uh, a black belt in jujitsu. Mm-hmm. How much time am I spending with you a week? Um, I think a minimum of three times a week is, is what it would take if you want to get it in any sensible amount of time. There are people that ca- are, are quick learners that can, you know, um, pick it up faster. But I mean, you got to put your time in. It's all there. there's no there's no substitute for that. Yeah, you know, you got to put your time in no matter what. And you were talking about like fighters that have these things. We we've, we've had guys at at Kaizen that's lived at the school, and in a room, you know, and just like a little a, a box, you know. I've you got had, you guys do that. We've had guys in here, dude. And, and I've had I've had one of my uh one. He's not a purple belt, Logan Yox, um, that would came down and stayed like a month with us to, to take private lessons with me and training jujitsu and live that at, and lived at one of the rooms in Kaizen, one of the, just a box on the floor with the, you know, with the blanket, no TV, nothing. And, um, and he did it, you know, and, uh, and now he's smashing people. Wow. He's smashing people. He's good, you know? And so you have to, you have to, the bottom line is you have to sacrifice. If you want to do that, you have to sacrifice. You can't be a great fighter and be part-time you can't be a great anything without without some form of sacrifice anything and i mean anything you can't be a great gamer you can't be a great you know you can't be a great filmographer you can't be a great director you can't be a great anything unless you're willing to put in the time and the sacrifice there's no getting around it you cannot you know there there there's very few things in life where you're going to be able to find shortcuts to find your greatness or whatever that may be. Now, Coach Tony is right. Some people pick up things quicker than the others, but at the same time, the people that, and he, he was mentioning three days a week. I feel the same way. If you want to have any kind of competent knowledge in anything, at least three days. Three days a week, which, which is about uh, but, two hours. But here's, what, here's where my caveat is. What are you doing when you're not at the gym those three days exactly. a week? If you want to be a, If you want to be the, the best, you got to be every day. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, so, the people that, you know, I, and I know. What, do, people, what does that mean? What, what I mean is that, you know, when, as far as when, you know, back in the day when I, when I first started learning martial arts and when I first started learning stand up, it was all about, you know, I would take my classes. It was three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay, cool. I, they would go, we would go into technical portions of class. We'd go into drilling, et cetera, et cetera. But Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, Guess what I was doing inside my bedroom? Practicing my jab, practicing mm. my cross, practicing my front kick, practicing my side kick, whatever that may be. It was all that extra time. And then all of a sudden, you know, after a couple of weeks, the instructors were like, how are you learning this stuff so quickly? It's not that I was learning it quickly. It was just to them, because I was only there three days a week, it looked quick. Mm. But I was working seven days a week to try and learn or to advance in that in that in, in a particular technique yeah. and like i said like i would say you know the first time i ever tried jujitsu you know one of the first things that they that, that they taught me was how to shrimp mm-hmm. right one of the first things that they teach you in bjj is how to shrimp be at home rug burns on my hips just because i'm <laughs> trying to shrimp I, I would go in a hallway in my house and I would shrimp up and down the hallway, and I would see if I if I could t- if I wouldn't touch the walls or anything like that. You know, you do stupid stuff like that. Yeah. But again, it's the stuff that you do when people aren't watching that makes you progress that much more. Because now you are not only listening to what your coaches are telling you; you are applying it, and you are trying to understand it and make it yours. And that's something that I've always tried to instill in all of the uh, all the students that have ever come through our doors. We're going to teach you the mechanics of it, yeah. but you have to own it. You have to make it yours. And by making it yours, then you can really understand and appreciate what it is you're trying to do. Now, being a, being a predominantly stand-up guy learning jiu-jitsu, I will say that jiu-jitsu is, quote-unquote, harder for me to learn because it's a different body mechanic. Right. But 
It's out of it's out of your wheelhouse. Yeah, so it's, it's out of my yeah. wheelhouse. But if you know, if if you teach me how to all the different ways that I can get to a guillotine and all the different ways that I can if you teach me one submission and give me the you know a bunch of different ways on how to get there, I'll drill all of those things and become proficient at finding it, seeing it, creating that opportunity, all of those things. And that comes with like owning owning that technique. So you look at guys that are like look you look at um Ryan Hall who was you know they they call him Dr. Ryangle because he <laughs> figured out all these different paths on how to get to a triangle submission yeah. you know and there are people that are experts at that you know and i know there's this is going to make you make you laugh Eddie Bravo rubber guard guy yeah yeah you know he finds a way to implement his rubber guard against some yeah. of the best jiu-jitsu players in the Ronda world Ronda Rousey armbar girl armbar girl yeah. but now she's now she's the what do you call it? WWE Dro- girl drop drop kick in the chest girl yeah. <laughs> but still you know you, you see what i'm getting at is that you know it's the time spent outside of the gym that really gets you to the to the greatness that everybody says they're seeking yeah listen people say they're seeking it and um and i probably would say that Less than five percent are actually seeking it, yeah. And, um, because you have to make it your obsession. Yeah. And, uh, you got to make it your obsession. It ha- you have to be obsessive about your training and um, obsessive about your goals um, in order to do stuff. That means sacrificing. So that means sacrificing time that with maybe family at times. That means sacrificing going out having fun. I mean, you know, you can't go out and party on the weekends if you're trying to be a fighter. I mean. M- I'm sure some do. Yeah. But the no, no, you can't you can't do that stuff. You can't it's a you have to dedicate yourself to it. Mm-hmm. You know, um and and that means repetition, 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 never stopping that repetition because it needs to be second nature. You know, yeah, if you have to think about what you have to do in a fight as opposed to just reacting, yeah. then man, you're late for that game. Yeah. You know. It's all about the the muscle memory and being able to be, you know, and I've, I've mentioned this before when I, whenever I'm in class. is like you don't want to just train so that you get it right. You train so that you can never get it wrong. That's a you good know? point. You know, yeah. for some of the, like, you know, you, you, you watch. I, I remember watching Coach Tony roll with um, Matt Omborg. Mm-hmm. I was watching you guys roll. And the way that they flowed, you can tell that watching anybody doing anything at a high level is always fascinating to me. I don't care if it's curling, jiu-jitsu, Muay Thai, boxing, whatever it is. If you watch it at a high level, it is freaking entertaining. Yeah. Watching Coach Tony and Matt Onborg roll one time, I was like, man, they they just really know what they're doing. Like They were setting each other up, and I'd be like, oh my God, Borg's guy, co-. nope, he doesn't. Oh, Coach Tony's got him. In. Nope, he doesn't. Mm-hmm. And it's just amazing to see. Like, and it's And it's because they have that, you know, it's the muscle memory. It's the it's the, it, it's actually honing and developing that skill to the point where it's instinct. It's no longer just something that you can you know you have to recall with memory. It's we, that you're just reacting to physically. It, it, that's that's a hundred percent true. It, you know the same concepts apply across the board, whether it's stand up and or Absolutely. or on the ground. Absolutely. You know, um, uh, Coach Nima at Kaizen MMA. Yes. Um, we we oftentimes we'll talk and we're like. You know, one thing about Nima and um, is uh, Nima's really good at jiu-jitsu. He's really good yes. at jiu-jitsu. I mean, especially passing your guard. And, um, you know, but also Nima's a smart man. He, he knows his stand-up very, game, too. Very. He knows about angles. He knows about the concepts that martial arts have in general. And he just applies it across the board. There are a lot of similarities, I believe, with the stand-up and um, with uh, and, and, and with jujitsu, absolutely, you know, um, the agree. same, the same d- disciplines, the same, um, the the same methods of training. I'm not talking about necessarily the same techniques, right? But the concepts of exactly. what you're trying to do, creating angles, uh, creating opportunities, um, leading your person down a path of yes. uh, uh, to catch them, staying you know. staying loose. In the fight, staying loose in the fight, yeah, breathing, yeah. <laughs> simple as <laughs> breathing, you know. Um, yeah, let's get back down to like the basics. Yeah. Breathe. We'll breathe. be amazed at how many people don't. You know, oh hold my god, breath. yeah, you see, you can see it. You can tell that they're holding their breath because they're yeah. turning red, and they're like, yeah. you don't see their chest moving. I'm like, breathe, and then you, you see them breathe. go. <sighs> yeah, uh-huh. you were Tony. You were talking earlier about, um, co- you know, competitions and kind of where jujitsu is going now. Yeah, you were saying that. Um, the one one issue that you're that you're seeing is that these guys that uh, that, that are getting a lot of press right now mm-hmm. are 
they're not flattening out. They're not being a wet rug on top yeah, of their. That's a good point. So, um, so you got people that have different type of games, and um, some people have a pressure game. And I'm not talking about a person that's trying to, trying to, you know, use every bit of their strength to, you know, but they just know how to apply their pressure properly. And um, and you got people which I'm not a fan of that jujitsu, especially when it comes to fighting. Mm-hmm. This hovering, you know, like like a like a, a drone hovering over top of someone, flopping around from one end to the other, never really applying pressure. Never. Um, and and when it comes to fighting, I I believe. Uh, listen, if if you're gonna hover around me, I'm you're gonna create space for me to escape. And um, and if you if you're gonna apply pressure on me, you know, then I gotta create my own space to escape but if you're hovering and, and just being all loose and on me I'm, I'm getting out i don't care i'm getting out and um and that that's what i, I see fighters not d- doing a lot of times talented fighters you know jujitsu guys that come in with a sport aspect um and then they try to they start to the uh knee on the belly here knee on the belly the knee on the belly they, just, they hover and and they're, they're just spinning around but and you know and maybe as a, hey, the guy's up against the cage the guy stands back up you just spend all that time taking him down and you let him stand back up yeah, you know, and there's there's no pressure there. So what are, what are some way what are, what are some 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 things that you can tell our viewers about pressure? Like what what are some some key factors in creating that pressure? Well, number one, you have to practice being able to create pressure. You can be a small person, and 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 feel much heavier than 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 your stature. So um uh so knowing the, the, the proper angles, you know um knowing how, let's say if it's side mount pressure, uh you know knowing how to to create like Helson has a side mount that's very pressurized. I mean, it's like, wow, you feel like your chest is caving in if it's done correctly, you know, and also blocks the, it blocks the hip. We don't, we don't do the, um, we don't, the he, he, go the the whole the, shoulder into yeah you know, no I don't do that and I, I when people hold me like that I, I get out Helson's over the shoulder with one and and grab the knee or un, under him tracing tracing the butt and um just a different d- different way but being able to apply pressure you have to be able to um. Uh, uh, control your person. Let's say, for example, my butt might, if my butt is too low or if, if my, if my belly's flat on the ground and I'm holding you on side mount, I'm not able to apply pressure against you. Am I, you understand? You understand? Yeah, Cause uh, no, my, my no. body, my, the, what's holding the ground is my, is the floor. If, if, um, if my weight is up just the right, if it's up too high, then that's incorrect either. But if my weight is distributed properly, then you're getting the pressure. You're holding me up. Instead of me holding me up. Oh, so so you're actually not gassing out easily. So you're not gassing out, yes. So a lot of that comes with g- proper positioning, and it takes time. It, and it's more of a feel thing, you know. Like I've had guys, I'm like, no, I'm not feeling any pressure at all from you. You're 220 pounds, and I'm not feeling any pressure at all. So come on, and I'll adjust him, and I'll make him adjust a little bit, a little bit, not, and then I'm okay. There it is. There it is. And then I'll try to I'll, I'll try to get him to settle into that to learn that. You know, and um, it, it's a big deal. But what's happening now in a lot of fights is guys will get people down and they're just get right back up. And uh, I'm like, man, there's no applying pressure there. And or, I, you know, the, you've heard, well, if you're not punching him, if, if he's not punching me, he's holding me. If he's not holding me, he's punching me. So if, if he's holding me, I'm not getting hit in the face. But if he's punching me, he's not holding me so I can escape. So I look at it. You want to be able to control your person at the same time and I'll be able to to, you know, create damage with your punches one thing about Helsin jiu-jitsu it is very it's very uh heavy on strikes from the ground yeah very heavy on strikes from the ground a lot of a lot of other styles are you know not he- Helsin's like all the submissions are there but we love the elbows we love the strikes from the ground yeah. and it's dirty if you, you should t- take it take an mma private with the guy and see it's nasty yeah and um and so, and a lot of guys when they come to train with me, you know, even guys that have experience in jujitsu, like, oh man, I never even saw that before. I'm like, it ain't for me. It's from Helson. You know? <laughs> um, uh, I just showed you what he showed me, and it's and it allows you to be able to punish the person down there without giving up position. And so that's that that, that is something that takes time, and not everyone sees it, you know. Mm. And if you have just a sport game, which is fine, I love the sport. The the sport game, I, I, I maybe the. Fifty percent or less translates over to the to the fight game. to the fight game. I really yeah. believe that. What do you think about this uh, new combat jujitsu thing? That's I think it's a good idea. <laughs> it's a good I, idea. I like it too. I like the fact that it's forcing yeah. jujitsu guys to worry about real mm-hmm. real world problems. I tell yeah. you what, I, if if punches were allowed in in um, 
if punches were allowed in the IBJJF tournaments, would be a whole new batch of champions there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, they, they are, 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 there would be a law of, yeah. you know, and then to these guys that figured it out because some of those guys are super, you know, I mean, it wouldn't take long for them to start adding it into the game. But with old school jujitsu like we did back in the day, you know, that's all we did in the beginning was learn how to not get punched and learn how to punch down there. You know, um, the clinch, you know, it's a huge deal. You know, a lot of jujitsu guys are great at rolling around on their back, but they don't know how to clinch properly. Your jujitsu to, to me is only as good as your clinch. So if you have a crappy clinch, you're going to get beat up by a stand-up guy who's going to just tear you up. Right. You know? Um, so that's why I look at it. If you have a bad clinch, timing is everything. Distance management, you know, is everything. Distance management is I everything. I love how Coach Tony basically talks about all these different concepts. And literally, and I mean literally word for word, same. you translate it to Muay Thai. It's the same it's thing. the same exact thing. Yeah. That's distance what management. I was talking about with you. We were talking yeah. about, right? Yeah. Distance management, pressure. Pressure. Creating angles, creating yep. opportunities. That's really, it, it really just goes to show how universal those concepts are between martial arts. But I did want to ask you this question. Sure. As far as the uh, BJJ tournaments go, mm -hmm. submission only, or do you like the point system? Um, I, that, that's a, I. Touch your question? Yeah, I, I like them both. Okay. But I would probably say I prefer the submission only. Okay. Um, uh, for sure, because it, the, um, it, there's, it limits the stalling. It allows people to open their game up and really go mm -hmm. for attacks. Yeah. Um, sometimes watching, you know, point only tournaments um, can get mighty boring. And, okay. um, you know, and I, I don't like, oh, he beat me by a vantage point. You know, yeah. um, he beat me. He beat me by a ghost point, you know, and <laughs> I've, I've lost tournaments by a, a, a vantage point. I'm like, what? What is that? I lost. It's. It's basically like I get. It's it's almost like getting a nod for something you did. Or maybe I attempted a submission. It was unsuccessful. Or 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 um, you know they'll give. So it's basically like a, it's like a pseudo point. You know um, you get a point because you could have did you didn't done this. But yeah, maybe I tried. Maybe I, I I I went for more submissions than the other guys. And and so since it's a point tournament, since I went for more submissions, um, I would get the nod. That is you the know? that is the difference between, like point karate and the knockdown karate i think yeah well if i look at the two i go i want to do the knockdown that looks more real i want to get as close to real as possible yeah so for me being you know layman here jujitsu i i would i would assume that submissions the where the way place to go if you want it to be real i think it's growing in popularity yeah. big time now and so submissions fun uh, you know and everyone yeah you know, remember for a while there's uh, they're going to be too the tournaments are going to be too long they're not taking that much more time or yeah. anything people are enjoying it people love to watch the submissions yeah. you know a lot of times you're like um uh, you, you're like oh i didn't even you know see who won that one that was so you know but but if it was a submission but you're talking about guys that are that some of these advantages and, and points are happening so fast that you know, to a, to a person that's not into jujitsu is not going to even know what happened. Yeah. Why did he win? How, why did he win? They'll say, you know. I look at it like this. Um, now I, I'm I'm all about whatever techniques that uh, you know jujitsu schools want to teach. It's fine. If you want to beer and boil, if you want to do all the other stuff, go ahead. Um, ha have at it. Um, I I kind of look at it like this. Will it Will it help me in a fight? Will it? Can my fighters that go into the cage do that? Um, would you do that on the street uh, or on concrete? You know, um, yes. uh, is that's a, a big, you know, uh, thing. I see a lot of guys do takedowns and their arms fall on the ground too. Well, that's not going to be helpful on the concrete. You yeah. know, they're, they're not. So um, just even a little pebble could, yeah. hitting in the back of your head, you know, um, uh, from falling, is, it can change the whole, can change everything, you know. Um, when we, we teach police officers, I do a lot of work with police officers now. Um, we're not, you know, telling them to go to the ground you know we're not saying that's the last thing we do we say if you if you you don't willingly go to the ground for these police officers that we're teaching if if you happen to be down there this is what you need to do right. but no you want to stay in control you want to stay on top i was about to ask you that i was a, that's exactly what i was about to ask you is uh jujitsu you talk about jujitsu and self-defense but for most people that look at jujitsu they go wait 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 I'm going to allow myself to go on the ground so two other of their friends can start kicking, hitting me and stuff. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my point. Uh, the, um, if I, let's say if I was a father that um, d was taking my uh, daughter to learn self-defense, mm -hmm. you know, 
uh, at a school and I walked into a jujitsu school and everyone was upside down sticking their butt up in the air and, um, and, 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 you know, uh, inverted and, and they're, and they're playing like that. I'd, 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 as a, no one that doesn't know, I'd be like, what is this stuff? How's this going to, you know, yeah. and they, they, they don't know that that could be dangerous for the person. It, it, that guy could really get you from down there. But my point is, is that if it's not functional in a fight, um, I, I, I don't, I don't care for it so much. Not that I don't think it's cool, yeah. and I don't think for sport game have at it. But in, in a fight or self defense aspect, it would be to me it'd be crazy to to do some of that. I would never willingly. Go, I don't even. I wouldn't. I don't like the idea of doing an arm bar or a, a, a triangle on the ground on a concrete. I would rather be on top. Yeah. I'd rather get my clinch, take them down, um, be mounted. And, and and create punishment, you know. If if I if I did if I did the opposite, then my jujitsu needs work on. So if I'm if I happen to be on the ground, then I need to know what to do when I'm down there, um, you know. But that's the last place I want to be, in uh, in a street fight, for example. Just so you know, Coach Patrick just said uh, Patrick Gall said submission only for him. Yeah, submission <laughs> only is is I, I think is uh, the 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 way to go, and it tells you really who is. Yeah, it makes it real. Yeah, who, who's who won? You know who? Yeah, won. absolutely. You know, um, let me yeah. let me go ahead and just do a couple of shout outs. Um, Victor Simmons, what's up? Mikey Custodio, what's up? Brian Logan, what's up? Imani uh, Muliar, what's up? Cameron Howard, freaking a Cameron, what's going on, buddy? Yeah. Um, I tried v- to say what's up, Cam. I'm sorry. Vivek Nak Nak uh, Nakarmi, what's up? Coach and- Vivek from Pentagon MMA out in Arlington. Oh, okay, what's up, Pentagon? Yeah, man, you guys are doing things out there, aren't yes, you? Yes, sir. Chris Valentine. Very good school, by the way. Yeah. Pentagon. Yeah. Chris Valentine says uh, balance between weight and mobility is what Tony taught me first starting. And ah. again, Patrick Patrick uh, Gall says submission all day. Dwayne Ball watching. What's up, Dwayne? Belated happy birthday, my man. Hey, check it out, Dwayne. You 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 uh you keep doing what doing what you do and sharing the podcast, and you're going to be a member of the week, man, of this podcast. Just <laughs> let you know. Um, member of the week uh, last week went to uh, uh, Neville. Oh, James. Yes. Yeah, because he you know he was he was shouting out. He was he was telling everybody about uh, Tony's podcast today. He yeah. was talking about. Um, the, we, we put up our, our May and April, April and May schedule. He put that out there. So please yeah. guys, please share. This is how we are able to do the cool things that we're doing here and talking to guys like Tony and you guys get to learn. Um, Chris Valentine says regarding pressure, we know what you meant, Chris. Um, and then I'd like to say what's up to Danny Polliard. He's actually, uh, he's a, he's a guy that, uh, I used to, used to know friends with he's out in, um, uh, Pennsylvania okay. and they got their own podcast. I'll shout it out. It's the working stiffs podcast. Um, just a bunch of blue collar guys talking about, um, life in general. One guy cool. is a tattoo artist and a, uh, welder, Danny. I'm not sure what you do, Danny. It's something blue collary. You do. He does. He works with his hands. Uh, their, their, uh, uh, their motto is uh, clean, cl- uh, what is it? Clean money, dirty hands, clean money. There you go. So what's up to all you guys? Thanks for listening. Keep listening. You're going to learn some uh, pearls here, wisdom, and some great stories here with Tony. So back to Tony. Tony, um, let's talk about, I want to dive, um, before we end the show, we got to talk about fighter's mindset mm-hmm. because you said that was the most important thing. Yes. What the problem is, is guys go into the game um, and it, they don't have to be fighters. They they could just be guys that come and train. I mean, mm-hmm. you you've seen it. Guys come and train, and their just mind is not in the training the right way. It might be in the training, but it's not in it the way where you're learning and you're becoming more and more proficient. What are some of the fears that you see that guys have as uh, training jujitsu? What are some of the fears that you see? As far uh, you mean uh, you mean for competition or just training jujitsu? Just in general jujitsu. Um. And it doesn't have to be fears. It could just be like hangups in general. Yeah, let me give you some context around this because I've had uh, in my history in coaching, not just in mm-hmm. Muay Thai and uh, MMA at Disciple, but also when I did my time as a TKD instructor, mm-hmm. there are a lot of parents that will bring their kids in. Just to, That's what I was yeah. thinking what you were thinking. Yeah, they, were gonna, they, they bring their kids in and they're like, I just need to build his self-confidence. I mm-hmm. just want him to feel like he can do more than what he actually does. Or she. Or, or she. You, I apologize. You, you freaking... Uh, sexist. You, sexist. Yeah, yeah, I apologize. But they do want their kids to be able to feel like more, empo- more empowered. Absolutely. Right? And I think that's 
you know that that's a very critical thing that martial arts brings to the game. Yeah. What uh, whether it's traditional or whether or whether it's any of the newer martial arts that that are around now, and especially Muay Thai, MMA, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Mm-hmm. So, in that context, when you when you talk about mindset, you know how do you how do you get that in, how do you instill that into people? Well, if you're talking about a kid, mm-hmm. um, and um, Gracie Maryland that we you know they they have a, a a big kids program. Okay, cool. And um, it's doing well and. Uh, it's amazing the the development that Mike Stewart and the instructors out there are are, are that they're uh, how they're bringing these kids along. Okay, you know um, a lot of it gets back to the parents. You know some parents aren't they'll bring their kids in and you know uh, they'll expect their kids to get promoted at a specific time and you know yeah. they, they keep it pretty old school they have to put the time in but as far as mindset goes let's say if a kid comes in and he's and he's he's bullied mm-hmm. you know or and it, a lot of that goes back to you know maybe his dad didn't didn't you know help him out maybe he's you know he just the, the parents are, are at fault for a lot of this stuff and we've had deals where parents will come in and the parents learn more than the kids learn you know, um, because the, we're like, no, we're not going to coddle your kid. <laughs> we're not going to let him get away with what he does at your house here. You yeah. know, this he's, is our house. <laughs> this is our house. He's not going to run his mouth. He's not going to um, um, disrespect. Like I, I was one time a, a, a kid just went and just kicked another kid for no reason. And um, like that doesn't that doesn't fly, you know. And a lot of these kids, parents, um, they're they're not really involved in their kids uh, uh, development I'm not, not I'm not saying all but I mean sure. I, I, but there are a lot of parents that yes. that just drop the kids off and it, it, it they don't realize that what is actually going on at the school yeah. and um, if they see what is actually going on the the, the, the the boys are learning to be confident young men they're learning that that um, that uh, being able to assert yourself, in a, in a positive way, not be, not being uh, doesn't mean learning to be uh, uh, necessarily tough, but it means learning to learning to uh, uh, give other people tell other people what uh, their his expectations are. You know, you can't go past these parameters with me. I'm not going to let you um, treat me this way. Exactly, it's you the know? difference between aggression and assertion. Exactly, and and, and and a lot of it happens. You know, where like we'll have a bully. And then you realize, uh, like, I'll, I'll teach the kids, I'll listen, you know, um, that kid that picked on you in school, you know, he, even though I know you're afraid of him, he's scary, you know, um, and he hurt you, he, you know, I want you to kind of feel sorry for him for a second. Number one, he's probably got a rotten life at his house, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. he's not learning properly like you're learning. And you're going to end up teaching him a lesson one day. <laughs> and, um, and so, and, and you're going to show him mercy. So um, the kids will come back and they're like, "Wow, um, he tried to he tried to push me. He tried to bear hug me, and I was able to get out of that bear hug. But I didn't I didn't hurt him. I swear, coach, I didn't hurt yeah. him. You know, I'm like, well, good. Did he what? Did he back away from me? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, and and it's things like that. These kids, uh, they're learning to be tough. They're learning to be young men and young women in these schools. And a lot of it is what their parents aren't teaching them. And um, I'm not saying that you got to teach your kid to be a warrior. I'm not. Oh, that, right. That's a bunch of crap. Yeah. You know. I'm just saying. You know. You can't if your kid is is uh, uh, running around not you know uh, n- with no discipline and try to let him get away with that in a school like in Maryland. It's not going to happen. The parents. When I was teaching at Calvert, I would have parents getting up and I'd even get them involved at times. You know. Um, and and they were sometimes they're laughing and sometimes they're like, wait, wait a minute, this is really cool stuff. And I know some of them wish they would have said that to their kids. You mm. know. So you got to the, the kids. You have to be able to give challenges. Let them get past that challenge. You know. You can't throw too much at them. You know. Sometimes they'll sit there and cry like a kid. You know. Are you really hurt? Are you really hurt? Come on. Yeah. Are you really hurt? Why are you crying right now? And he, he did this, he did this. I'm like, come on, is it really hurting you right now? Uh, you know, well, no. Um, and I'm like, okay, then you're good, aren't you? He goes, yeah. Um, you know, and so well, get back on the mat. Well, get back on the mat. <laughs> Let's show him how it's done here. Let's yeah. you sh- show him that that you that you're okay. Let's tell you know, and then they get a little bit. It doesn't mean you're being mean to a kid. Yeah. But as far as fighters go, the fighters' mindset, I I'll know right away if if the if the person's coachable or not. 
Right. You know, and maybe you can teach a person that uh, to to be coachable. I had a guy when, when I first started over at, at Kaizen. He had really bad ADD. I mean, really bad. I okay. mean, this guy like a goldfish. He he he, <laughs> he just didn't have that much. He was. You would talk to him, and then boom, he's he's spacing right away. Uh-huh. And um, and I was like, and I'd have to walk by him. You know, when I teach him, I'd, I'd hit him on a, I'd tap him, or I'd stop my foot in front of him and get him to wake back up. You know, nice. And um, and uh, but he would just totally just space out, gaze, up, you know. And um, I was like, you know, wow, he's, you know, and then and in class, he really had a hard time doing it, you know. Okay. But I made him do it and made him do it. He goes to a tournament. He thrashes everybody. Nice. He just. I'm like, what? Where did you come from? <laughs> you know this this guy. You, you, you know, and literally, he 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 just. He was able to turn it up on a tournament, but in class, he was one of the worst students we had as far as <laughs> being able to teach. But in a tournament, he did everything. I I'm still trying to figure that out, how yeah. that happens. But everyone's teach. Everyone's. You have to. Some people are visual learners. Some people learn it. You know, they they need to hear it. You know, some people are tactile. They need to feel everything. They need to feel what's going on. And and with jujitsu, and I'm sure you have to do it all, you know, mm-hmm. and um, uh, making someone do it. And one thing I have, a, I have a, uh, a rule. I always want someone to finish on a positive note. So if let's say they're doing 100 reps or something, if I'm not going to let them finish until that last rep is perfect perfect or or the best one they did i let them finish on a positive note i don't let them finish on a crappy repetition you know and um so and then they i just have a thing i think that goes further than people think um you know and and we'll find out the people i say kid to one of my kids uh, i'm like listen you're like one of the biggest kids you know he's like 18 you're like one of the biggest kids in here if you do what we're telling you to do, you're going to be a complete badass. You're going to, by the time you're 25, you're going to be the biggest stud around. Yeah. But you're 18, you're not listening to us. Take it from the old man. We know, yeah. you know, if you do what we're telling you to do, you know, have you, have you been training? No, I haven't been training. What have you been doing? Um, you know, I've just been kind of hanging out with my friends. I'm like, I, yeah, you have to do that too. But but you got to train too, man. You know, and um, these guys, the one kid, he's, his dad's in there pushing him and pushing him and i see this this he when i say kid he's 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 you know he's not a, a a young kid but man he's he's turning into this man he's he's becoming a stud you know i've seen some of the guys they're off in the military now that when i saw them they're like little kids and now they're off in the military yeah that's and weird it, 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 it's crazy but the mindset is everything um especially when it comes to a fighter you have to make sure that they're coachable you have to make sure that they listen to you and um when it comes to the fighters with the regular jiu-jitsu guys i'm not as mean i'm a little bit more um uh giving but when it comes to a fighter that's going to represent me represent and and i don't want them getting hurt you know mm. so i'm gonna say listen man you better start listening to me i don't want you fighting you know, you better start listening to what we have to say. If you're not going to listen to what we have to say, you want to do it your way, go ahead. You know, <laughs> go ahead, do it your way. You you invented this wheel. Go ahead and, and, and see what happens. <laughs> you know? I like that. You invented this wheel. So, oh, Adam Levy is finally on. What's up, Checking Adam? in. What's yeah. up, buddy? Hi, Adam. What's up, man? Yeah, you, um, you, you, I like your style. As a parent, you know, I'm, my, my, uh, my daughter's, tur- she's turned five recently. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm putting her into, I want her to just, Train jujitsu early, you know. Good, it's good. one thing I wish I had started early in life, and um, you know, I'm trying to find different schools. And there's one really close. Tad Merriman um, mm-hmm. is opening up Alpha Jiu Jitsu. I've uh, heard good things about that school. Yes. Oh, really? Um, yeah. A good. Yeah. Good things about it. Is it Ambar? Uh, who was the Ambar uh, Barbosa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so yeah. You're not going to go wrong there. Cool. I'm, and I'm excited, and I, and, I, and it's cool because the whole family is going to be in on it. Like. I could not get my wife to do any jujitsu with me. She did Muay Thai for a while, but okay. but now that the girl is going to be doing jujitsu, the deal is she said I'm only doing it if mommy does it. I'm like yes, mommy's good, doing good. it. Mommy's <laughs> doing it. So we'll, so we'll be all up in there in our geese and stuff. Very but cool. can I ask you guys a question? Of when it comes to your daughters, your wives, and and what uh, um, I, I know, we're sta- basically stand up is self defense anyway. You, right. you got sure. it, yeah. it, it is you know. Yeah. But jujitsu has pretty much. You know, there's two. There's there's a really sport game that's doesn't work so well with self defense when there's punches. But if you we're talking about jujitsu, would you want your wife and daughter to to learn how to defend themselves from attack, 
or would you want them to learn uh, the, the sport game to win gold medals? Or, or Exactly. You know, that's, that's the question I have now. I think they're both great, and I think that, I think that you should do sport. I really do. I believe everyone should compete. Um, you don't have to, but I think everyone should compete and learn their sport. But when it comes to my daughter, who's going to take off to college, colleges are crazy now. Yes, I want are. her to know how to get out of a bear hug. I want her to know oh, yeah. when a guy, if a guy tries to uh, mount her. attack her, yes, mount her. You know, um, I want her to know if somebody tries to pull her hair and yank her down. Yeah, I want to. I want her to know that stuff. You know, yes. does yeah. she? Does she train? She did, and um, she's you know, she's, she's now she's. She's uh, 16 now, and she's all, you know. Got 16 so She's line. not daddy's little girl anymore. She's just uh, She's 16 Yeah, now. she's 16. I'm, a, I'm the goofy dad, you know. Um, but, uh, but <laughs> that, could, she, kill, that it, could kill anybody that she brings. Yeah. <laughs> but she's super smart. She'll get into it. Yeah. She, she will get back. You know, I, had her, you know, I had her doing mitts and everything. Right? You know, you That's know, awesome. Yeah. Rick, Rick McCoy talked about his daughter, and Chelsea didn't become Black Mamba. I mean, she and she grew up She grew up in, the, in, the, uh, in, Le, the, in there. Yeah, she grew up in the gym. But she didn't become... Uh, the Black Mamba until her boyfriend got her into got it. Got her into it. <laughs> That's wonderful. I mean, when it comes to like your your wife, your daughter, it's a must that they know how to defend themselves. Absolutely. I mean, it's not getting things aren't getting nicer out there. It's getting crazier. Yeah. You know. Um. And I think that the sport game is for fun. Have at it, man. Do yeah. it. Enjoy it. Sure. And, and it's part of the, it's part of the game. But I think be well rounded. Don't neglect half the sport. I yes. think I think Tony and I mean if you look. If you look at the bookcase, you see a lot of uh, martial arts books there. You see a lot of nerd books there too, but you see a lot of martial arts yeah, books. Clint Eastwood with a rifle. Clint Eastwood with a rifle. <laughs> the thing, the thing that I think, as an anthropologist in East Asian studies, mm -hmm. I study, I study as martial arts is part of it, right? The death of a martial art, martial meaning war, mm -hmm. art obviously the art, is the sport. Is when it becomes when it becomes more sport. Uh, oriented, you start to kill the martial part of it. And some people are okay with that, but me as a martial artist and as a, somebody who studies that, uh, keeping it pure means it's still effective. And yeah. Muay Thai, people look at Muay Thai like it's new. Muay Thai ain't new. There's nothing new about it, man. Not it's a ancient. Lot. Yeah. It's ancient. It's ancient. over 2,000 years old. Muay Thai is, look, seems new because you can still take someone out with Muay Thai. Yeah. It ain't a joke. Yeah. So they look at it as new. It's living, yeah. right? Brazilian jiu-jitsu. As far as I, you know what I mean? When, when the Japanese jiu-jitsu, okay, it was fine, all well and good. But when, when Brazilian jiu-jitsu came out yeah. and, and, and the, the, Changed the game, and the Gracies were like, uh, everybody needs to know about this. And the way they're going to know about it is we're not just going to have a bunch of schools. We're going to compete and yeah. we're going to yeah. show it works. Well, Here's the thing, right? When you when you have a sport that becomes so popularized um, and it becomes a sport, that's one thing. But then there are people that still, you got to remember the the roots of it and what what happened to change that landscape. Like when the Gracies came in and introduced Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they they introduced this whole new um, landscape of fighting because before. If, if, if you know, at one point in time, historically, when people said "I'm going into a fight," they thought you meant boxing. Yeah. And then at one point or another, they thought you were kickboxing. And then it became, you know, once the Gracies came in, it was like became this whole another landscape that oh, we're not just doing stand up. If it goes to the ground, the fight keeps going. By the way, you know, you're getting head butted on the ground. You're getting knee knee on the ground. You know, stuff like that. Like or if was, you're in Pride, you're getting soccer kicked. Yeah, I miss Pride. By the way, I do too. I miss uh, one of my favorite fighters, uh, uh, Bustamante. Mm. Yeah, he, he was a great fighter Murillo? Yeah 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 he was a great fighter And I happened when I was in Thailand I ran into one of his black belts out there That his game was amazingly similar to mine and, Really? Um, yeah so And uh, he was an MMA fighter Really uh, he, he came uh, Where is he from? Finland or something Okay uh, But uh, but I wanted to say so, I, I Make a point about the sport Versus the self-defense aspect Or the fighting aspect um, uh, th th That's kind of important I I know that someone that's very good at the sport game can probably handle themselves well enough on the street to to deal with the uh, with an average uh, person. So let's say if you're a guy that's constantly getting gold medals at, 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 in tournaments, you're probably going to fare well in a street confrontation against someone that's not trained for sure. Right. You know. So and you're talking about these. Some of these guys are inc incredible athletes that 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 um, are are phenomenal sport sport uh jujitsu guys yeah what i'm talking about is um the average person that is you know 
learning. I, I just, you know, it, I'm not talking about someone that is a phenom sport grappler, famous, you know, that he's going to be fine on the street. He's going to know enough. He's athletic enough. He, he's, he knows how to do jujitsu enough to do well on the street. But that doesn't mean that that guy will do well when he's up against a, a real fighter mm. when, he, when he hasn't trained punches. And there are some famous jujitsu guys that are absolutely rotten when it comes to real fighting. Famous sport guys that have no idea how like, to stop punch. Like who? Oh, man, I don't, that's. <laughs> but uh, there's a few of them. I've I've mentioned it in my classes before, you know. But I respect them for their sport game. But but I think it's 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 really bad. Um, but as far as uh, uh, for for fighting, I think it's really bad. But as far as like the average person, that's what I'm talking about. You know, you want to be able to teach them some measure to better protect themselves on the street. You know, I know a, 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 a IBJJF sport guy is going to be able to handle himself yeah. pretty well on the street. Don't don't yeah. think that I'm not thinking that. You yeah, know? I'm Absolutely. saying, but that guy n- n- doesn't mean he's going to be able to go into an MMA cage and fight a a an animal that. That is maybe even a general practitioner of jujitsu, yes. but but a great stand up guy, and think that he's going to be able to do that with that guy after it takes one punch, one or two punches in the face, and never learn how to deal with that. It's a big difference in the game. That's what I wanted to say, yeah, and absolutely. and, and I, I stick to my guns about that because I've seen so many people come in that have that have great sport games that just it's lay nasty. eggs once the yeah. punches start happening. Yeah, you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know? <laughs> now, but uh, but in a sport, they would they can they can you know run, with, with run, the, run a train on you with those with those rules. <laughs> yeah. So good. now going into that, I w- I wanted to bring up this conversation. I told you I want to bring it up yeah. uh, uh, at some point in the uh, in the podcast. Um, favorite grappler, favorite fighter, grapplers and fighters, and why? Uh, Damian Maya is my favorite. Uh, fighter as far as especially for his jujitsu okay. because what does he do that's fancy not a damn nothing thing. <laughs> and that what i was saying earlier he he's like he like envelops you he like just he like consumes you like the blob consuming you yeah. and I, I mentioned earlier he his game is like a if, if you compared it to football it'd be a running game as opposed to a passing flea flicker game yeah you know um it, it, you know there's no crazy acrobatics it just basic Good fundamentals in a clinch. Good fundamentals, knowing how to move on the ground. Now I think his stand up is, we know his stand up is not where it should be. Right. And I think that he he needs to work on that, obviously. But you know he's that's what we're saying. He needs to yeah do that. I'm sure he is. But yeah. um his ground game is is the best in uh, MMA fighting right now. Jacques Array is another one that's that that's doing great. Um, uh, uh, but he is the best as far as I I believe. He's the wizard in MMA. On the ground right now. Now there's a couple of guys coming down the pike that I think is going to be uh, really changing, uh, you know, mindsets. Uh, who might be coming down? The, to, um, Gordon Ryan, I think might might be fighting uh, one day. Um, Gary Tone is another mm. one that I oh, that Tony. I think is that I think that guy, even though he's a great sport guy, but he's he's a killer man. I mean, the guy can just do whatever he wants to do, and I know he probably has good hands too. So is Gary Tone in like the hu- I. I, I, this is me being, you know, whatever, ignorant, but mm-hmm. from what I've seen, isn't he like the hovering uh, drone guy too? Gary Turner does whatever he wants to do. He, um, and uh, so I've seen, well, watch, did you see when he felt Palaris, that guy? Th- that, yes. That was a great that. fight. The guy's a, That guy was a maniac, by the way, who yeah. hurts people, doesn't let go of submissions. Yeah. And Gary gave him all he, could, he can handle. You have to respect that, yeah. you know? Um he he's he is someone to look after. So I would say no to answer your question. Yes, he has ability to do that, but Gary knows when to apply pressure. And he, I mean, the, the, he 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 is he is the new breed of what's coming out. And um, Gordon Ryan's another one. Plus, they 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 just rip people's legs to shreds. And um, I I think it's th- th- those two people. If if they get into the MMA side, I think are going to be you studied, turning heads. You studied Sambo, which yeah, I, Sam- little, so I competed in Sambo before. And Sambo's got the leg locks. Yes, down. a lot of they're pretty. Yes. Did Helson give you any trouble? As because I know a lot of traditional jiu ju- uh, jitsu guys don't like leg locks. No, no, Helson likes Helson has his own foot locks and leg locks and stuff, and I use them all the time. But when I did the Sambo, I won the national Sambo in ninety ninety eight. I competed and got got a bronze. Ninety nine, I competed and won the gold in the national sambo championship. And uh, and um, and we went there with like Steve Maxwell. And I don't know if you know who Steve Maxwell is, but I Steve Maxwell name. is an old school dude that's yeah. can, that was Helson's first black belt. Actually, he didn't get a diploma, but he's Helson's first black belt okay. um, at the time. And um, and Steve was he just crushed everyone in it. 
And um, so we did a Samba tournament, and um, uh, I, I, back then, I mean, Lloyd Irving was fighting back then in the Samba oh, tournaments wow. and these guys. So we're talking about a long time ago, 98, 99. Speaking of Lloyd Irving, we're having uh, DJ Jackson on um, awesome, yeah. either either May or June. Yeah, that's that's another one that is super well-rounded that could do he's, he's in. He, well. I think he's, in a, he's, uh, he's doing, fighting um, the, the Worlds, I guess, the Abu Dhabi. Yeah, yeah, he. We, yeah, the reason why he couldn't make it was because of his schedule for the Abu Dhabi combat. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah that's. I mean, he's another one that I have mad respect for. Um, but uh, your question was about um, uh, what I was saying Who, earlier. Your favorite grapplers, um, favorite, favorite grapplers and fighters. Favorite grappler. No, I, I was a fan of Fedor. I mean, because I was going to ask you yeah, about. Yeah, I was Fedor. a fan of Fedor. Um, you can't. How can you not like Fedor? Right now, um, you know, at, at the end of his career, you know, he got he got you know he had yeah. some trouble. But the guy was, he had the best mindset for a fighter, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he, he was deceptively agile. Yes. And, um, and, and I'm guessing super strong too. Yeah. And um, he just didn't quit. Yeah. You know, I mean. Just an assassin. He and the was thing, the man. Yeah, and the thing that I, what, one of the things, and the reason why I brought that up, and I'm so glad that you brought up Fedor, is because I know for a long time a lot of people loved, were such huge fans of Fedor, and there are some people that after Fedor started to see a decline in some of his wins, people are like, oh, well, he was a fraud. No, no he wasn't no, a, fraud. No one's a fraud. He just, you know, the game caught up to him. You know, other fighters started to catch up. Exactly. To, him. to, to, to take away what he accomplished is crazy. And a yeah. lot of people, listen, if you hate someone, yeah, but you can't say the guy was a fraud. You know, yeah. 90% of, I would say a hundred percent of people that are claiming that he would be a fraud would, 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 uh, he would, he would turn into a, a, a blood stain. Posers. Absolutely. And that just uh, for full disclosure, those are the guys that are, you know, it's the, it's the trolls that are really just saying keyboard, exactly. keyboard yeah. warriors. Keyboard warriors. So, so I like Fedor. Um, yeah. I'm I'm a huge fan of Cron Gracie. Um, I am too. Uh, uh, and and I was another thing. What does Cron Gracie do? That's that is uh, so nothing. He just does all so basics. circusy. He yes. doesn't. He his fundamentals. Uh, Hydra Gracie. You have to give the guys. He's a big guy. But Hydra Gracie came after came uh, after a five year layoff and beat the top guy out there. Yeah, beat him. Yeah, you know, it's insane. He, it, it is insane. So he solidified himself as the best at that point. Now I'm also, as far as grappling goes, I'm a huge fan of Marcelo Garcia. You can't be a huge. You, who, how can you not respect that guy? Yeah. Um. You know, we're uh, he. The guy is a wizard on the ground. That's the Marcelatine guy. Mar- what is that? Is that the guy that has the the guillot- his own guillotine? Or no. Is that a different Marcelo? Oh, I don't know. That might yeah, be a we're, we're talking about Marcelo Garcia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean he's the guy's. He's a legend in, in uh, um, sports jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Um, and he is a wizard. You know, pound for pound, I think he's the best that ever lived. Um, ever uh, lived? I Yeah. I, I think pound for pound, I think uh, he's the best that ever lived um, when it comes to sports jiu-jitsu. Okay. I think that I think that, that is completely not the case when it, come, when it came to real fighting. Yeah. Um, so just I will to say, say this. This is, this is interesting. You, you, you talked about, like, you know, all these guys that have um, – phenomenal mastery of fundamentals and how well they can do with that oh, yes. with that skill set. You know, you talk about Cron Gracie, Marcelo Garcia, Fedor, and I think that was, to me, that was always the most fascinating thing about them because the, these are guys that actually just take fundamental mastery and really take it to a very high yeah, level. Yeah, they make it look like magic. Yes. Like Marcelo Garcia looked like he's doing magic tricks yeah. out there. Yeah. Um, the guy's that good. You know, he just wasn't a fighter. Yeah. He just, you know... A lot of guys don't. Phenomenal jujitsu practitioner. Phenomenal jujitsu practitioner. Now, the, the like I said, the best one that I think that's went from that game to to bring it to the fight. Mm-hmm. Who, who do you got? You got a Damian Maya is, is one of the ones. He's I'm also a my instructor. Maya guy. Yeah, and I would probably have to pick those two as well when it came to transferring over to to, to fighting. Yeah, absolutely. you know. So I want to give. Uh, I want to congratulate Adam Levy for asking the final question of the podcast tonight. And and it, it is this: Do you think it's beneficial for MMA fighters to train in the gi? I know this is the first time you heard that. That's question. a great question, and the answer to me is yes. And um, for two reasons, I think the gi helps you with your defenses. There are more handles, there are more holds, and there are more things to to that can attack your neck. And um, so there are so many more things you can get caught in. 
Now, um, uh, when you if you're good at the gi, and a lot of the best uh, jujitsu guys out there do the training gi. Now, there there are some that don't. And that's fine. I think you need to do both. I really do think yeah, you need absolutely. to do both. Absolutely. You need to spend time on both of them. But I believe that the gi, the gi helps your no gi game, and I believe the no gi game helps your gi game. But to avoid the gi, then that's what traditional jujitsu is. But think about this: if you can escape all these things, I have handles. I have, I have all these handles, you know, uh, that that like, and you can still get out of the, and, and escape those handles I have on you. Um, or then the, you, it helps your defenses. It cleans your jujitsu up, and it allows you you, do, you you you're not using as much athleticism as you would be in the no gi game. You're not using uh, things like sweat. You know, sweat is not a technique. <laughs> and, um, uh, and so, sorry, James yeah. <laughs> and Jonathan Jonathan Hughes. <laughs> yeah, they, they sweat a lot. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, yeah. James Neville. <laughs> When he sweats, it's literally a hazard. <laughs> well, some, well, sometimes you know you rolled noogie for a while. People are slipping out of moves based on sweat, and um, but it imagine, you know, I think the gi cleans your game up. I think it it it, it makes your jujitsu crisp, but I also think that you need to do both, and um, especially your defenses, because how many chokes can you have from a gi? Lots of them, you know. Um, and I, I tell my students, you know, you know, defend your neck. Everyone is like. Uh, you know, I, I like, you know, if, if you were to like motion, like you're going to hit me down in the private area, I'd be like, whoa, 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 what are you doing with that, that, that visceral, like, huh? Like, I want you to feel that way about your neck. neck <laughs> yeah. So that, that instinctual, like, whoa, whoa, that's my neck. What are you doing? Um, if, if you, if I can get you thinking about that with your neck, then you're not going to get choked as much. And, um, yeah, so I think they're both important, but don't neglect the gi. Don't neglect no gi as well. You need to do both. And I would probably, I spend, I'm probably 50-50 right now. Okay. Uh, spend time in the gi. But people that say, you got to do both. You know, you're not wearing a gi on the street, but you're also not walking around in scabies on the street all the time unless you're at the beach. Yeah. So. Um, oh, God forbid it's winter. And yeah, you got yeah. a gi on when it's winter. Yeah. yeah. You know, that if, parka is. If you're fighting, if you're going to fight someone in a bathroom or something, just don't. You know, <laughs> run, uh, run yeah, away. Yeah, just, you know, just don't. So uh, speaking, of, speaking of disgusting, because we're talking about uh, sweat. One one thing is when I was when I was uh, rolling and training a lot, I got ringworm twice. Yeah, and I and I and I tried really hard. I did all the things that guys do. Mm-hmm. I you know I took a shower immediately after mm-hmm. training, and then I had the the tough actin to actin and spraying that all yeah. over my body. Yeah. What now? How how do you keep from getting like all these like nasty grungy things? Well, I think it happens, but you just can't be. Disc- I'm not saying you, but. You're getting a ringworm from other people. Yeah. So the one thing that I have a pet peeve about, if you're coming into the gym and you you, you just used your gi, uh, like, you know, for three days, you left it in the trunk of your car. And it's and, summer. And it's, and it's, and it's summer. It's hot. <laughs> and it comes in and it smells like ass. No, you're not. I'm not. I know right away. I'm like, dude, get, go. You know, I, yeah. I don't want that rubbing on my face. Um, and, and you have to. You have to have a responsibility. If, if if someone has some stuff on their skin, you know, maybe they need to take a break that day. Yeah. You know, it, it's transferred. I, I don't think it's transferred from, um, from uh, like, inanimate objects, ringworm. I'm pretty yeah. sure it's you're not getting it from the mat. Now, I think you can get things like staff and stuff, and um, that's the really scary one. Ringworm, I think everyone's going to get it sooner or later. But we have, like, rules. You know, keep your nails trimmed, you know. Yeah. Don't come in smelling, you know. Um, uh, have your gi cleaned. In, um, if you got stuff on your skin already, you're not training today. You know, um, it, it, it's that's the thing. I mean, I know schools that had it rampant. They, they're sterilizing their school, and it still didn't go away. It's because the people are bringing it in. You know, yeah. it's not necessarily the school. It's not the school. It's not the school. It's the people. But it makes the school look like a dirty school. It makes it. Yeah, of course. You know, um, you know, I, I I've had guys that'll come in. You know, smelling like uh, like you know they've been smoking cigarettes for. I'm like you, you know, what are you doing? I don't, I, I don't, I'll, I won't even use them as a, a, a training, a, a training partner. Yeah, so go on, you know. Or if they come and smell like skunk weed or something, I'm like, come on, dude. You know? <laughs> dude, you know? Eddie Bravo you, immediately <laughs> turned off the podcast. He's like, nah, man, I don't, I don't care. This is it, how I train, a, bro. It, 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 but you know, don't come in with your, your, you know, don't come in stinking with your game. Don't come nasty. in smelling like all day, dude. Now, yeah, you know, now all the questions are. Now that I said that, that was the final question. Now we got another <laughs> one, of course. Chris Valentine, how do you feel at to this point 
in the time now that no gi and MMA is a bigger part of BJJ with schools only doing no gi a couple of months like back in the day. Have you changed from a school teaching perspective on that? From a school slash teaching perspective on that? And what's up, Kevin Breen? Yeah, finally got uh, on. No, the, I, the I, I, I think for what I understand what you're saying, I, you got to do both. Is, is that what he, is that... Yeah. yeah, and I mean, you got, the, your 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 emphasis is more on doing both equally on you know yeah, equal yeah. time to both. Yeah, equal time to both. There's no reason not to do both. Right. Absolutely. You know, um, there's no reason why it, uh, you should do both. And a lot of the times, a lot of your techniques should be able to work with both. For example, like I, I, if I'll teach a technique, I go, "Hey guys, uh, let's I'll teach a, a no gi technique. This works also in the gi, or um, or vice versa. Or some right. that actually were guillotines." Working gi or no gi, right? Absolutely. So, um, and arm bars work with gi or no gi, and you know there's some things with the gi that won't work in no gi. You I, th- know? I think Chris was trying to f- trying to ask how do you feel about the that the fact that that's going that direction, and I, I would imagine I mean, that you're not you're not okay with only no gi. I'm not okay with only no gi because you think that you, there's no way you could be a great. Okay, oh, you can be a great grappler w- with without training the gi, of course. You can be a great grappler with never training no gi either. But I'm saying do both. I'm looking at it from a practical um, you know, perspective. You know, so you know, what if it's winter time and uh, you know we just you just walked out of a bar and some guy with a winter coat on. And, you know, would, um, you know, do you, or you have your he starts grabbing on your coat and you know, my there it all it's it's situational too. So sure. the gi you can use you know um, uh, to 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 uh, um, help yourself with self-defense. And there are going to be times when you might fight a guy on the beach and you're in no gi, you know, or, so I, I look at it as you, you, <laughs> it, you, you got to have a little bit of, yeah, a little no. bit of, so both. train. So listen guys, train w- both. when you're in summer to prepare for, for winter train gi, when yeah. you're in su- when you're in summer, you train for or uh, vice versa. We used versa, to do that away. back in the day. We used to we used to <laughs> uh, during the summertime. There was always no gi. In the wintertime, we put the gi. That's how we did it back in the day. At least that's how our how, how we did it for years. You know and, that's awesome. Um, and then and then you can't get you can't wait for no gi season or you yeah. can't wait for gi season. And then if you have a tournament coming up, you know depending what it is, you you, you kind of do both. But what we do like my classes right now are probably split 50 50 at Kai's and sometimes like I'll I'll, I'll make them always bring the gi. I say, bring your gi, you know, but I'll say, okay, t- guys, take the gi top off, you know, and, um, and so they're, oh, we don't, not, no gi today. A lot of times I'll say, take your gi top off. You're not going to, you know, use your rash guard or whatever, but, uh, uh, we won't use the gi today. Mm-hmm. I think it's good to do both, plain and simple. It, there's no reason to neglect either one of them, you know. Um, I, 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 like I said, it's 50 50 for me right now uh, when it comes to, so you train 50-50, but do you prefer one over another or, oh. feel, more, or, or feel more comfortable with one versus um, another? No, um, I, I, I could care less about being politically correct about any of this stuff. Sure. Um, I, I prefer the gi. Okay. Because, and uh, that doesn't mean I don't love no gi. Absolutely. I just Absolutely. really love the gi because yeah. I like the fact that I can choke him with his own collar <laughs> yeah you know uh, i think it's fun and um you know that's, like that's fun <laughs> the, the, i mean you're like wow well, use what he's wearing against them yeah you know um absolutely. and and plus it can happen and you know like anyway. right now if you let me i could choke yeah, you with, with your suit yeah i could i could you Let's know do it your your no. your no your t-shirt right there can it's good for a few chokes yes you know so um it, it what would you do with a t-shirt a guy I, wearing a T-shirt. What would you? What choke would you apply? There, there's, I could. Is where you ball up the go from back. back. Yeah, there, yes. and you could get it. You could get it. You just. I wouldn't just use the thin fabric right here. It'll rip. But but we we ball up the fabric in the back. We have a couple good chokes with uh, with a, a T-shirt on. But and you know for uh, what kind of chokes do you have uh, with no gi? You know the rape choke. You know, um, the that, rear naked choke. Is that man, really what it's called? The rape choke? Uh, that's like what you'd just squeeze your neck like this, right? Uh, okay. Um, the uh, 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 rear naked, you yeah. got that. Um, uh, maybe a no-gi Ezekiel and, 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 and some guillotines. But with the gi, there's so, with, there's so many other things that you could just... It To me, it's more... Uh, it's like an artist, and I, I either yeah. give you I either give you charcoal to work with, or I give you a whole set of paints. Yeah, you're still, no. paint, you're still making art. Yeah, you know, it just you're using different tools, but the the point is, I'm trying to make do both, have yeah. fun with both, you know. If, but if you don't like one, do what you want to do. I'm, yeah. I'm, there's no hard and fast rules with sure. it. But uh, but I but I do want to say, if you're gonna do jujitsu, learn the whole art. I mean, yeah. you know, why not learn the fight side of it, 
the self defense side and the sports side. Yeah. You know why? Why not? There's no why reason not? to not. You know. There's no reason. To so not. those. So those. If you're pe- gonna spend the time doing it. Do it. Yeah. So those people that are that really want to do a private or train with you, how do they get in touch with you? You give them my number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. They, uh, they can contact uh, uh, Kaizen MMA. Um, and, and I'd be able to do that. They can also contact, uh, over at, um, at Gracie, Maryland, uh, Mike Stewart school, Gracie, Maryland, um, who's running a phenomenal school between those schools, man. They're, they're, they're both my family. Just so you guys know, Kaizen is spelled K A I Z E N, right? And yeah. then MMA. And you know, you know, we, I look at the teams, you know, we got some good teams in this area. Kaizen is a definitely a top team. Absolutely. Disciples, a top yeah. team. MMA Institute is a top team. Um, uh, who else is out there that's a top team? Uh, you got that, Beta Academy. Beta Academy. Yeah, we got top teams in this area. You can go to pretty much any school around here. You're gonna get, you're gonna get really good instruction. Yeah, this I is mean, a this is a good hub for jujitsu. It really is. You have Yamasaki. You have Lloyd Irvin. You Absolutely. Have, you know all the uh, a lot of the Gracie styles out here, and you have a lot of Gracie schools out here, which is you know kind of kind of cool. They're everywhere. They're popping yeah. up everywhere now. Capital. So, yeah. and, and MM and Muay Thai, you know, I mean, you know, uh, there's there's a lot of schools that are catering to that now. But you yeah. still want to, you still whatever school you go to, you still want to make sure that they have a decent lineage, that they're legit. Yeah. I know you're legit. I've yeah. seen you. I know you're legit. Um, you know, and there, uh, so you can't go wrong. You know, pretty much any school you go to in this area, you're not going to go wrong. Yeah. There you I go. Did, I will say this about the whole gi versus no gi thing, and it's funny that Coach Tony kind of you know says the same thing. I remember a long time ago, I had a conversation with uh, Coach Tony Passos. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I asked the question, I said, Coach, what do you like? Do you like gi or no gi? He said, I like both. He was like, I think yeah. both is important. And he said, but I will say, he was like, I love no gi, but when I wear my gi, I feel dressed. And I was like, <laughs> okay. He's a smart man. I, I was like, that, that's yeah. fair. That's uh, a really cool way to put it. I, I feel I'm, dressed. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. So I, Even when I wrestle no gi, I wear my gi my gi bottoms, my gi awesome. pants. Yeah. yeah, it helps me get arm bars and it helps dry them off. <laughs> you know, and and it's just easier for me, you know. And the last thing I want is someone's like leg hair in my face. Oh, you know, that's, or, yeah, that's disgusting, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so we're rash guards, you know. I it, I don't want to wrestle. Len Len would when Len had body hair and he would go no shirt and I <laughs> he would intentionally pull his my face into his chest and I'm like oh just one added thing that takes yeah. me out of my <laughs> you're, talking, you're talking about Len Len Smith Len Smith Len Smith's a Viking <laughs> yeah so, um, Len Smith's a Viking he's gonna do whatever he can to punish you absolutely you know he's he uh, and Len is actually a super technical guy yeah. and in jujitsu and um uh he he is a beast and yes he's strong but I tell you what man I you would not want to there's a story of like Len you know, shoving sand down a dude's face one time, Jeez. making him eat sand one day. Oh. <laughs> so, so in a fight, they pick a fight. Yeah, Lynn is Lynn is one person you would not want to mess with on the street. I can say that for sure. Yikes. I would not mess with Lynn t- for any amount of money on the street. Yeah, there's no way. No way. Lynn's a scary dude, and um, <laughs> and because he knows stuff, and and also, you know. I mean, he's a monster. He's too. a monster. He's yeah. a specimen. Yeah. yeah. But I've heard some crazy stories about Lynn that you'd be like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Maybe that'll he be is, on uh, Fight Stories, yeah, the yeah, other yeah, thing that we're doing. Yeah. If he let me tell the story, I would. But he, uh, <laughs> Yeah, let's clear it with Lynn. We yeah. want to hear some stories about good old yeah. Lynn. Dude, how do we do Lynn's that? Lynn's my brother, man. How do, how do we do that? Because like, one of the things that Fight Game is going to put out is the Fight Stories thing. Yeah. And I want to be able to... Basically, put these guys uh, in front of a camera, you know, good lighting, and yeah. and just have them tell stories. But I feel like so many stories uh, in the fight game are just like, nah, I can't tell that one. Nah, yeah. I can't tell that one. Nah. <laughs> maybe I can next time a Helson comes into town. He comes in quite often. Maybe you guys might want to get him in here. Would Ooh. love, yeah, that would be amazing to he have Helson in, in and, here. Uh, he'll tell you some stories for sure. Oh my you gosh! Know, um, and uh, I, he would there, love to come in. There's to, a part of me that feels like. Uh, 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 a session with Master Helson would just kind of be like, "So, Master Helson, what's going on?" And then it's two hours of him just talking. Like he could just tell stories yeah, for two yeah, hours. They're yeah, really that's good. exactly what it'll be like. Yeah. And, uh, and, yeah. he, he, and you know, but he listen. He, he the guy is a wealth of knowledge. Is Absolutely. All I can say. And um and he's one of the nicest guys out there. And his he his his his, his jujitsu is sick. It, you know, you have until you take a private from him and really see get yeah. into the depths of what he can do yeah. he's he, everything hurts yeah you know? and i've trained with pretty much all the gracies except like henzo i've tra- i've worked with all of them. i've been okay. with him and he's the one that's just a, he's the scariest to me 
Yeah, I feel like the style, and this is just my my personal take on like the Helsing Gracie style, and you know, there's so many different ones out there, but yeah, like the the to me the Helsing Gracie style is equivalent to like a steamroller, and you're the pile of asphalt. <laughs> yeah. No matter how big that pile yeah. is, this th- this slow pressure thing is coming, and it's gonna flatten you no matter what, and it's just yeah. gonna go over you, and it's you you're, you, you it, can it, fight it all you want, you can fight it all you want, and it's just gonna keep going over you with that steady pressure, yeah. and you're just gonna flatten out no matter what. His game has ability to shut stuff down. Yeah, you know, so a lot of these newer type techniques, I guess you'd say, the, um, yeah. He his he ha- he shuts it down. Yeah, and um and that's what I like about. It. I I think it's great when a person practices a yeah. lot of these stuff and then and then I, and then it's shut down with something very simple. Yeah, you know. Um, and I'm, I'm like, and they're like, oh man, you know. Yeah, you just so, killed uh, my game. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, his game is very stifling. Yeah, you know, it's very stifling. Cool. That's good. I like that. That's a that's something. God, like, I can't wait to get back into jujitsu, man. I really can't. I'm really excited. with us, man. You get, you get this. You get so many people that would, that, are in this area that would be like, come on, train, let's go. I know, and and that's the thing in this area. It's like it's very, it's very welcoming too. It's it's not like people. A lot of people, I think, get scared because they think it's going to be like a fraternity. It's not a fraternity. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like you come in and you you do your best, man. Most people are very humble and they're yeah. you know and, and respectful in yeah. this area for sure, man. Absolutely. Know. Cool. We, we are. I appreciate this is this is a fun time. Yeah, wow, man. I, awesome. I I had a great time. I was really excited to have you on, Tony. Um, I've only really gotten to talk to you from the teacher pupil perspective, but to, to get you know to get to it's talk to you in time, this way, yeah. yeah, it's been a long time. You know, um, one thing I want to say is that uh, for those of you guys out there looking for uh, legit uh, jujitsu, like I said, you cannot go wrong anywhere Tony's at. Tony tends to go and kind of help different schools get yeah. up to a level so yeah you know there's you you've you've birthed a lot of schools you've helped a lot of schools yeah. become what they are today so i'm, I'm at kaizen and in, in, in maryland i'm i'm there and uh gracie maryland um under mike stewart's school is the two places i teach at and you and 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 one day you're, you're thinking about starting your own school I'll, I'll have my own place soon i mean it's been a while since the uh, since the uh fight works but uh, I just don't know really? if I'm going to do it in this area. Okay. You know, I really want to be somewhere warm and, and, and <laughs> I don't blame sunshine. You. There we go and, again and, with the warm weather, yeah. dude. I don't. I don't blame <laughs> you, man. I'm st- I'm quote unquote stuck here because yeah. you know you 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 put down so many roots in a place, yeah. and you can't just like pick up and leave. Like I, right now, if I could go back to San Diego, or if I could go back, San go, Diego, wow, yeah. yeah, or go down to Florida, like you said, I, the, I'm a beach guy, so that'd be perfect for me. But again. This is this is this is my home. So this is where I'm at yeah. right now, um, guys. If you guys enjoyed this podcast, first of all, share it. Share uh, what Tony was talking about, what Coach Paul was talking about today. Um, this is valuable stuff. Don't keep it to yourself. Be like a Gracie and spread the wealth. Yeah. Um, you guys, we're on again. www. Uh, Patreon. That's p a t r e o n. dot com forward slash fight game podcast. If you really do care about the stuff that we're doing and what we're planning on bringing out, which is a lot of shine to this area with a lot of cool video content, then consider being a member. It's only $2 to be a, a basic uh, fan, uh, member of the podcast and you're helping the show grow. We're looking at getting a stu- an actual dedicated studio space so that we can have a, and, and I'd actually like to put mats in there too. By the way, because it'd be cool to like have technique of the week. Te- yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. It, no, exactly. I yeah. want to be able to like have me know. back for that. Yeah, hey, hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, maybe please bring somebody to demonstrate on because yeah. I don't want it. No, to be No, no, Paul, Paul. <laughs> just remember, you can take the coat off. Yeah, that's true. Or keep it on. He'll yeah. he'll choke you with that too. That would be he's a, looking actually, sharp though, man. That, I, I, that I, might actually be a cool thing he, for he Coach doesn't Tony stop. to 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 do like stuff like that. Where you know, once we start doing technique of the week stuff. You, you know, bring in your ratty like, old stuff so that yeah. you don't mess up your nice clothes, but he can show you. Yeah. If 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 a uh, if a businessman treats you bad, yeah. This is exactly. how you choke him out. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd like to have a mat in there also for bad blood too. Like I'd like to settle some differences Jeez. on the show. <laughs> And everybody, I mean, Rick McCoy lit up when I when I mentioned that. He's like, "Yes, do that." <laughs> so I think we got a lot of guys that are game that are like, "Yeah, we would we would have we would settle our differences on the show, on the mat, Gracie yeah. style." Yeah, M- remember Gracie's what they would do? They would uh, they'd they'd sign make you sign a waiver yeah. that said. Um, this is going to be videotaped, and whoever wins gets the rights to the videotape. Yeah, yeah that's going to go. <laughs> if you did that, that's going to go. 
uh, bananas. The sky's the limit with that. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited about that. Oh. So anyway, there's a lot of cool stuff, guys. Be a member, help facilitate that, make that happen, and show that you actually do care about DC, uh, DC, Maryland, Virginia martial arts, uh, MMA, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and of course, just the fight game in general. Um, I, I'm not going to say another damn thing except for thanks, Tony, for coming on, man. Thank yeah, you guys for having me. It's been a real pleasure. I appreciate it, guys. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Cool. And thank you, Paul, as usual, for uh, co hosting. All right, y'all. Take it easy. Remember, go to Patreon forward slash uh, Fight Game Podcast, become a member, and you are going to get all this goodness. Peace out. Peace.